Hmm, okay. So, after a little bit of working out, it seems like I've got Streamlabs going again. Uh, the <laughs> I always run into a bunch of issues with Streamlabs uh, when I'm about to start streaming. It just generally, there's always one problem, whether it's the Discord thing above my head or whether it's something else. So, luckily, it looks like, oh dear, don't break now. Okay, everything looks good. So, uh, recently, the channel went past 16,000 subscribers, and now uh, it's actually nearly at 17,000 subscribers, and <laughs> I thought it would be worthwhile doing a QA. and a uh, So, if, if, uh, and, and the reason to do this is basically just so to keep up and if there's any specific questions. Uh, you guys have uh, for me, or, you know, anything that can be deciphered, or if you want my opinions on something, doesn't always have to be War Thunder related, but I'm just making sure that everything is working, and hopefully it is, let's see. Right, there we go. Okay. So it is working. If somebody could type something in chat, uh, just so on my end, like, everything is good. That could be wonderful as well. But yeah, basically, plans going forward uh, with the channel. Kind of do the same stuff. <laughs> Work really hard. Uh, put a lot of hours in and make it grow, I think, is basically the way to see it. Uh, the only other thing, really, that I want to do a bit more of is uh, try and do more podcasty stuff, because that's generally what I like doing. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Okay, so it is working. Uh, the price of the Leopard 2A5, uh, I believe its RP cost was 400000 but I would have to check that. I know it was higher than you know, the previous stuff, um, but one thing is, uh, obviously all that stuff is subject to change, my screen is going haywire right now, which is a bit odd, but, um, if you do have any questions, as it says at the bottom, please put it in, uh, Q&A for tech, on the tech hub, and yeah, this screen might actually be dying, uh, it's, <laughs> I've just had some random flashes across it, uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to get into the questions, and then uh, there might be some other stuff, uh, such as, like, I might take more questions from the chat, but the main thing to understand is that uh, I'd like the questions on the Discord, so it's just easier to go through, right, uh, for me personally. So let's get set up. There we go. This is what you see from uh, Streamlabs, by the way. So, now if I do this, and then that, and close that, there we go. Everything should be grand, or at least I hope so. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, otherwise uh, we may have a few issues. I'm, I'm hoping you can't see the little screen tearing that's going on. Uh, I think that's just from my end, so... Oop, dear. Clink, clank, clonk. Drinking some herbal tea today, uh, just to make sure that my voice doesn't kill itself. Um, but let's uh, get started with the questions as we mean to go on. So, as I said, this is for the 16k that we've uh, just passed, or... You know, 2,000, uh, 2, 16,000, nearly 17,000, and I thought, yeah, let's let's just have have a chat about some questions. So, the first one is from uh, Kailu the Pilot, do you like cheese? Um, I like Edam, Edam's good by itself, uh, not many cheeses are good by themselves, Brie is alright, uh, but obviously cheddar is the pick, right? <laughs> cheddar is the one that you always go to. Uh, and basically just, if you like uh, generic cheddar cheese, then you're normally going to have a good time. For me personally, uh, I would probably say my favorite cheese is Edam. 
Do I like green eggs and ham from Nuclear Waste? Was that Dr. Seuss? I think it was. Uh, I mean, I've always thought about... Uh, there, there was this guy, I can't remember his name, but he was a chef from England, and he's well known for just doing really weird combos uh, when it comes to food. And uh, the the idea is, uh, it's not Hugh Funley Whittingstall, um, I, <laughs> but basically he, he does like weird combinations. He had a TV show ages ago, he's a bald guy, and I always thought it would be cool to try and... You know how they, like, make a cake, but then they make it out of something which you're not really used to? I always thought you could just do that, but make a restaurant, and then every so often, you just serve food to a random person, which is the wrong colour. So it's kind of like a lucky dip. And yeah, it may freak the person out a bit, but then you'll be known as the, ooh, who's going to be the special person today? And then everybody wants to be that special person, you know? So, I thought that would be a, a cool idea. Uh, you can call me Tech. Tech works. Uh, do you have legs? Uh, that is undisclosed information, uh, but I have got up from my chair on a live stream before, so hopefully that proves that I have legs. Am I a vegan? No. Uh, I like meat. I understand the moral quandaries of all of that stuff. Um, I just disagree. Uh, coming from a place which was heavily farming orientated and um, working on farms, uh, I understand you know, the process and I also understand the people behind it and I get it, right? I understand, but I just disagree <laughs> because of the idea of a balanced diet. And yes, you may look at me and think, oh, you know, he's obviously he's not living by that rule, but no, I, I do have a fairly balanced diet. Uh, do you think that the evolution regarding the Japanese T2 jet is a good thing or a bad thing? Um, so this is an interesting one. Uh, when it comes to the idea of the T2 right now, so one problem I'm looking at, right, uh, and this is a problem that I'm going to run into in ground forces, at least if it stays the way it is, and uh, air forces as well, is at the jet level, you have tiers. And it's it's kind of, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people talk about, you know, the Mac 1 and then the Mac 2 tier. And you kind of have that, but you also have this idea of fighters, which are semi... Uh, which are semi uh, all rounders, and then you have others which are just straight up fighters. Now, the Japanese T2 jet, uh, if you actually just left it by itself and actually put in all of these fighters and all rounders around it, which have similar speeds, then yeah, it would be fine. But right now, it does seem a little bit odd to me that the raw speed cannot be competed against. Uh, and we have seen this in the past, and it, it generally hasn't gone too well uh, <laughs> with stuff. I mean, a lot of people use the example of the Hunter when it first came out. I don't think that's a good example, uh, because we didn't have air to -airs. And also on top of it, the difference between it and some of the other Sabres was not very large. We're talking about a huge jump with this Japanese jet. Uh, it, it reminds me personally, of when we had Camberas and B-57s against propeller planes. You know, that, that could happen back in the day. I still remember Hokkaido, you know, being in my late tier Spitfires, and, oh, there's a B-57. You know, what do I do against that thing? Well, nothing. <laughs> I'd, uh, I have to hope he lands, and then I have to hope that the airfield AA doesn't kill me, and then maybe I snapshot it, if he doesn't J out, right? And with the Japanese T2, my biggest issue is uh, I really enjoy the setup, right? The setup is the important bit of any aerialistic, uh, com you know, combat. And when, when I'm talking about ground realistic, you know, that doesn't really matter in this context. But with air realistic, the thing with it is it's very important uh, to be able to set up two to three to maybe five minutes before you get a kill. 
So then you can set it up all in a line and work out what you want to hit. Now the T2 gives you this ability without having a counter to it. There is no counter to the raw speed of this jet. So therefore it is going to be up to the players who are against it to be very vigilant in making sure they don't get set up on. But the problem is, how do you do that? When one of the key ways you used to be able to do that was to climb or to reposition yourself in a map so you could burn the energy of the opposite plane. Well, against the T2, you can't do that. If you climb, it will get faster. If you set to burn its energy, it will just climb again <laughs> and just stay up there and wait. The only thing that's going to limit the T2 is the ground-pounding aspect of Aerialistic. And I know a lot of people don't like talking about it, but with the T2, if you have an extended fight, you could kind of win on, uh, you know, the ground, where basically the AI kill each other, and then the T2s are just left high. Like, that. that's the only way I see it. But I think it is right to test mechanics uh, before they come out. You know, the Tunguska is a good example of this. It's a one-off, and then I'm sure, you know, in the next update, we'll get a bunch of others which are very similar to it for other nations. And then, you know, the Leopard 2A5 is not really another, uh, but it's a similar type of test when you're going, like, you know, far on in this idea. Uh, but when it comes to the Japanese T2, I think we've already done the test. You know, it's still a supersonic jet, it has the same air-to-air -air missiles, it has radar. All of these tests were done, well, uh, at least over time, have been done for a long time now. So, for me, when I have a look at it, I am just kind of surprised that there isn't a competitor. But then we get, right, so, even with that, even with the competitor angle, right... The competitor last time, it was the F-100 versus the MiG-19 PT, and those were the two competitors. That leaves out all the other nations, and with the, the way that the T-2 works, I mean, a lot of people bring up a bunch of American aircraft that can face it. The problem is, with the speed that it is, where it's kind of in the middle, especially of a lot of British aircraft, and a lot of uh, Soviet ones, I believe there is a Soviet aircraft which is similar to it, but... What I'm thinking is going to happen <clears throat> is instead of getting a, a lot of similar stuff to it, what we're going to see is instead just a bunch of stuff above it. Uh, and then it's going to become one of the bottom dogs. Kind of like what we're seeing from the Type 90 right now, uh, to be honest. But is it a good... Is the overall evolution a good thing? Yes. Of course it is. The overall evolution is good. It means that we're getting more modern, we're getting more mechanics, We, uh, you know, more people get to play uh, a certain vehicle that they want to play. Right now, though, for the next few months, it's going to be absolute hell. Absolute hell uh, for working out how to balance it, working out, you know, how to play against it, working out all of these things, you know. And anyway, the uh, next one, what was your first vehicle? In War Thunder, uh, the Gladiator. Uh, the or It was either the Gladiator or the Nimrod. Uh, I played the British Aircraft Tree first. This was around six, maybe more years ago at this point. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, I played that. I remember unlocking the uh, British Premium. I remember playing Arcade for uh, really, really enjoying it. And... Uh, then I just ground through the majority of the British tree, got to like rank 4. I dabbled in other trees, and then I just decided, you know what, let's just play all the trees. Let's see all the the interesting stuff. Because this was before ground vehicles. This was when it was just air. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was really fun going through the British tree uh, first time. Now, uh, with the way that the typhoons are, I don't think it'll be as fun. Will you do a leg reveal at 20k? <laughs> uh, maybe. We'll see. I like the idea of people seeing me in an electronic wheelchair, kind of like a crazy mad scientist. Why is the world a bad place? Uh, it isn't. The world is a wonderful place. The problem is, is as humans, we focus on the negatives, and the news definitely doesn't help this, <laughs> but uh, the news in general is in inherently negative. 
Can you imagine a news station reporting, hello everyone, nothing serious has happened today, have a good day, right? It's not going to work. They have to inherently talk about the negative stuff in our society, and therefore the majority of the stuff that we consume is going to be negative, and this sets a pretty horrible precedent, really. Um, but it is unfortunately how, you know, our minds work. So, yeah, it's it's just one of those things. You know, it's just, it, it's something that you have to realize and then get past. But generally, the world is a wonderful place. There are bad aspects, but the majority is good. And if you're in a bad place, there are not many places on the earth you can't leave. If you are in one of those places where you can't leave, then I hope the situation gets better for you. But if you're old enough and you can go somewhere else and be happier, take the leap. You'll feel a lot better for it. Will I do a foot reveal at 21k? I don't think you want to see my feet. They're kind of like hobbit feet, very hairy. What do you think about your fellow War Thunder YouTubers? Uh, I've said from the start I really like uh, more variation when it comes to content in uh, on YouTube, and the more people who make the content, the better right so uh, in my opinion i've always encouraged people to make videos uh, to make commentaries to give their opinion on stuff you know it's it's a lot of fun uh, when it comes to the war thunder community it's the same thing you know the the only thing we're really missing uh in the community is well there's two things the first thing is like a a, a war thunder twitch community that takes off like there are some streamers who are doing well or at least can make a living but it's it, there needs it needs to be figured out why it isn't the next level you know war thunder is a popular game but it isn't bringing in the same numbers as games of similar stature so we have to work out why that is and maybe go forward with it another thing uh when it comes to it is um what was the other thing oh yes some kind of podcast like the i've been watching the uh the angle better podcast you know the one with slick oxide and uh kath and and uh croc i don't know who croc is but they just keep saying croc so <laughs> i'm guessing it's the other dude the the thing about it is they constantly talk about top tier and I know it's very important for a lot of people, and a lot of their content is around top tier. But for me, uh, personally, that's not really what I'm interested in. So it would be cool uh, to either, for me, to produce some kind of you know, podcast where we go over the news on a week-by-week -week basis, like maybe on a Friday or a Saturday. Or, uh, you know, it may be better to... Or it would be nice to see it, right? One of the things um, I think the community in general is missing is some kind of podcast which covers all aspects instead of and one which is um one which is uh every week or bi-weekly like one one of the biggest problems uh that there is with making content uh, that i see is consistency and that's why on the tech hub that you see in front uh we value consistency so you could have like two subscribers but if you make a video every week for months on end you know you'll get the youtuber role that's just how it works uh, as long as you you know let us know about it the so the podcast idea has to have consistency and dedication behind it and i feel like a lot of people may struggle with that idea you know and i don't blame them it's a hard thing to do so those are the two aspects i think are lacking and would like to be increased the other aspects i think are pretty good you know you've got a lot of gameplay you've got a lot of opinions you've got a lot of stuff like that going on which is wonderful you know it's it's a vibrant community where it seems like at least every point of view is being shown and yeah <laughs> kind of as similar as like similar same as that right uh by the way uh with uh, you guys in chat uh, i apologize if i don't uh answer all your questions i would like to say hello to all of you and if uh you know if you do have a question please make sure to put it in the tech hub discord under the q a for tech uh you know room so 
you know, I can get to them and move through them. Uh, Skino says, how were you introduced to video games? So, my dad uh, had an old computer, and uh, it ran Windows 98, and it was pretty beat up. <laughs> and um, I remember he gave, he basically put it in my room when we moved to a new house, because he wanted a new computer. So, we got he got a new computer, he gave me that one, and the idea was to use it to learn to write, to learn to read, you know, all of these things, because my, uh, before I went to, you know, kindergarten, uh, my sister had taught me to read and write, I'm very thankful that my sister did that, because it kind of gave me a step ahead, and the computer uh, didn't have any games on it, but uh, we had a floppy disk, and this floppy disk had a Thomas the Tank Engine game on it, and I remember that uh, for the longest time, <laughs> the my dad had to go into the BIOS to get this game running. And it was a really fun game. You know, you basically, you had to make sure that Thomas and his friends got to the right place. You had to click the different tracks. You had to make sure that everybody got to their destinations properly. And that's just, uh, you know, that's just how it is right? And uh, as a kid, that was really fun. This is when I was really young. Uh, but my first proper, like, thing, or proper, let's call it, like, you know, uh, my first proper uh, go into video games was a game called Big Red Racing. <laughs> and uh, if you've never seen this, I don't blame you. I'll just do that real quick. Oh dear, that's not very nice, is it? Uh, but this is what it looked like, right? And I found an OST of this, and I'm I've been playing it. But basically, it's very simple, a very low FPS, uh, and you know there was boosts, there was different types of cars. The AI cheated a lot. Uh, there was even you know boat sections, all of this, and you know that that was my introduction i suppose to gaming in a way you know it wasn't the grand strategies it wasn't you know anything like that it was this <laughs> and from there you know i started playing a lot of other games but this this was just an amazing game absolutely adored it i definitely want to play some more but yeah you can see they had helicopters and they had everything it was a wonderful game anyway uh so on to the next question how have you been doing lately? Kind of worried about uh, you during the dev servers with the amount of videos you churn out. I mean, if if there ever is an issue, right, uh, I'll make sure to stop, right? <laughs> it's kind of as simple as that. I'll make sure to take a break. There has been a few things um, mentality-wise that have been screwing with me. Obviously, the, the shill stuff uh, is never good on the brain because it's... You see people saying stuff about you that you know is not true in your own head. And one of the biggest issues I have personally is the, uh, is the problem of people prescribing motive, which is wrong. So a lot of people say, well, you only say this because of this. And I know for a fact it's untrue, but you can't go through every single person and explain to them why it is that. Or what is going on. So for me. The problem is. Uh, that. I, I just. I've run out of time. To be able to go through everybody. Who has all of the little criticisms. And this or misinterpreting what I say. Uh, and dealing with them. I do not have time to do it. Anymore. I used to. But now with. You know the amount of uh, videos and the content that I'm creating, and the way I'm going, there there isn't enough time. <laughs> it's kind of as simple as that. So when it comes to you know my physical state, I'm good. You know maybe uh, well over the summer I'm I'm out a hell of a lot. Like uh, basically everything ramps up about June, and I start moving around the world uh, to go to different places, to go to different things for work. So. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, but when it comes to physically, I'm completely fine. When it comes to mentality, there is definitely an itch there. 
uh, when it comes to it, but I'm going to have to work out how to deal with it in a positive way. And I think I can, you know, uh, I definitely can, but it's, it is how it is, right? It, it's very hard uh, to deal with that. I don't even know if there is a way. Um, I mean, I, I suppose a lot of people just, the way they deal with it is ignore it, right? But even that is very hard to do. Do you think America will get the F5 to balance the T2? The virtually identical in performance. Well, one of the things I've been trying to uh, promote with these discussions, you know, like when I'm in the voice channels on the Tech Hub, and yes, over the last week I haven't really been there because, well, as you've seen, I think I've created about 100 videos over the last week <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but the the main thing uh, is instead of just looking for America or instead of just looking for the Soviets, it is very important to try and look for every nation, right? Or something that you could at least prescribe to be there. Because I know War Thunder for a lot of people is just about one nation or two nations, you know. And uh, because they are the main one nation, whether it's like America, Germany, Japan, whatever it is, and therefore they hyper-focus on that one nation. But what I am personally interested in is the balance across all nations, because I'm worried about a top tier, which we might see coming, which is T2s versus T2s, kind of like how we see F100s versus F100s. So for me, it's much more about looking at all nations. So yes, the F5 could probably quote-unquote balance out the T2, but the issue is everyone else. What do we do for them? If you could add any British vehicles to the game, what would they be and why? Uh, the Covenanter, the Centaur, and the Whitley Bomber. So I'll actually bring them up, actually. I might as well. Let's uh, see how we do with this. So the Centaur. There we go. This is the Centaur. Very similar to the Cromwell. Very similar, but there are differences. I have gone uh, through it in the past. The main difference is the engine, and a lot of the Centaurs were mounted with a 95 uh, that you can see right here. So uh, that is the main difference between them. There is other differences when it comes to the chassis and also the turret. Uh, a lot of people get them confused. Um, you know, they think that the, the Centaur is the same as a Cromwell, and they're not. Uh, they are different. They were made around the same time, during the same ideas, but there is a lot of nuance here. The main reason I want to see it is because it would give a reason to put in the 95, uh, the 95mm that the British use, the howitzer. And I know a lot of people would probably not care about it, <laughs> but for me, I'd like it. The, no the other one is the Covenanter. Because the Covenanter tank has a really cool story behind it. Uh, so the Covenanter tank kind of got screwed by the war. And I, I know this sounds really odd, right? Uh, but I'll go through it. I, I do actually, in the list of videos I want to make, I do have, you know, the Covenanter as one of those ones that I want to go through in its own video. So the Covenanter was built 1939-1940, uh, around that area. And at the time it was built, it was a really good tank. And what I mean by this is, well, really good might be a bit of an overstatement, but it was good at what it was supposed to do. You've got to remember at that time, during the invasion of France, the Germans are mainly running around with Panzer 1s, Panzer 2s, Panzer 3s with the short barreled, uh, with the short barreled, gun and then panzer fours with the shorter barrel gun so the short 75 the short 37 and then you know you've got the panzer two and the panzer one which either have machine guns or cannons and the covenanter was designed to deal with these so it would outrange them and also be quite maneuverable and not take up too much space and from that point of view you know it had the two pounder it could outrange all of the German machines. The Even though if you look at this armor, you know, it doesn't look great, does it? But this is highly angled. It's also got extra uh, armor here that we'll get into. And then also the turret itself 
was pretty good against the contemporary rounds at the time. Uh, the problem is, is when the Covenanter was properly ready to go, uh, the Battle of France was finished, <laughs> North Africa started, and the Germans started coming out with the long-barreled 50 uh, on their Panzer threes. So the Covenanter was outranged. And also, it had issues when it came to its design and the engine. So the engine is mounted on the Covenanter in the back, obviously, like a lot of uh, tanks. The problem with it is, is it's really damn wide uh, as an engine. And they didn't want to make the tank crazy long. So they fitted the engine in sideways, and that meant that the radiator had to go on the front of the tank. So, what you see this add-on armor here is, it's actually add-on armor put on top of the radiator with the, the warm pipe running down the side going to the engine. Now, this is obviously a bit of a design flaw, but generally, it didn't really make that much of a difference in the overall, you know, in the overall scheme of things. But a lot of people point to it as just kind of funny. But the um, <laughs> but the, the thing about uh, the Covenanter is... Because it was ready to go between the period of the invasion of France and the North African campaign, by the time it was going to go into service, it was outdated. There was like a five to six month period there where the Covenanter would have dominated but it didn't go into combat. And instead, they made 1,200 of these and never used them in combat. They use them for a bunch of training exercises. They even use them in home defense in areas such as, you know, uh, defending trains and things like this, but never use them in an, like a, a proper official army capacity. And it makes me sad. There was 1,200 of these things, and nobody knows what they are. Nobody remembers what they are. They just think maybe it was a one-off. No, it, it was one of those designs which had its issues, but worked well at the time it was produced, but when it was designed to go into combat, it wasn't future-proofed, and therefore it was going to have a bad day. <laughs> it's kind of as simple as that. So yeah, it's um, it's it's just it it's a it's a it's an unfortunate thing for the Covenanter. But I would love to see it be in War Thunder, even though uh, it had its flaws in War Thunder it uh, wouldn't have it. Now, the last one is the Whitley Bomber. So this is the Am Armstrong Whitworth Whitley, and uh, this is one of the OG uh, British bombers uh, of the war. And as you can see, uh, oh, looks like it just downloaded it for me. Uh, so, actually, give me a sec. I think I'll try and find a book. This might be worth actually promoting. So I'll just try and find it. There we go. Let's just do that real quick. I'll leave it on that. You can probably still hear me. I'm just going over to the bookshelf. Oh. Right, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, that's very annoying. Right, so let's fix the webcam. There we go. So, uh, there is a book, which I will find on the internet now for you, so we can actually talk about it. Uh, let's see. Yorkshire airfields in the Second World War. So, I... I uh, grew up in Yorkshire, and because of that, I have a, not really, I have a big tie to the countryside, right? And a big tie to the area. Now, if you don't know, Yorkshire in World War II was a large area for bomber command, 
right? It's as simple as that. So with the uh, Yorkshire airfields of the Second World War that you can see here, this was uh, kind of a homage to all of the people who served under Bomber Command from the Yorkshire airfields. So the way that the book works is it splits it down by airfield, right? And then from there, you are able to experience the stories of each of the bomber crews and what they flew and their opinions on all the vehicles and all of these wonderful things, right? And that's awesome, you know? <laughs> that's really cool. So I really like this book. And in this book, it tells some amazing stories about the wit with Whitley and how useless it was. Uh, <laughs> like the the um, it it was not a good aircraft uh, according to the majority of the bombing crews. It was kind of seen as a punishment if you had to use it. Uh, there was a lot of stories uh, across the English Channel where uh, there there was one I remember in particular where there was a flight of Halifaxes and Lancasters which were going. And one of the bomber crews, Lancaster, uh, sorry, Halifaxes, was not ready to go, and therefore they were transferred to the Whitleys. And the Whitley that they brought out hadn't been used in a while, and let's just say the engines weren't exactly in the best nick. So basically, uh, what they did was <laughs> when they went across, uh, when they went across the um, the English Channel, sorry, not the English Channel, the North Sea. Uh, they couldn't get above the cloud line by the time that they'd hit, you know, Scandinavia. So they were open to AA fire because they couldn't get the altitude high enough and the engines were freezing because there wasn't enough power coming out of them. And it's just, it's a wonderful story, a hor hor horrific story for the people involved because the, the pilots eventually went, screw this, and just turned around and went, we can't do this, like, we're going to die. It's as simple as that. Like, no chance. Uh, everything's going to go wrong. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Whitley was one of the OG British pencil bombers. It was mainly used for... Uh, chucking out pamphlets of uh, propaganda and things like that. But it was used in some bombing raids. But by the time the war came around, uh, there was a lot better designs. Uh, the Wellington, obviously, uh, was the design of the time. Then, of course, the Halifax, which everybody forgets about, but was the workhorse of the war. And then you've got the Lancaster, you've got the Manchester. You've got tons and tons of interesting bomber variants. But for me... One of the ones that kicks it off is the Whitley. So I would like to see it in game, even though it wouldn't be very good. The only vehicle out of those that I've shown uh, that I think would be anywhere near what would be classed as meta uh, would be the Centaur, depending on its BR. So yeah, uh, beer out of those three. Uh, right, let's see. Where do babies come from? You know, that's a very philosophical question. I'm pretty sure it's Saturn. Do you think Gaijin needs to put more effort into naval, like the effort they put into ground? The problem is, what does that mean? The effort is a word which is kind of banted around, the same as, um, what's the word? Uh, it's, it's kind of like, you, you know when, well, maybe you don't, but if you have like a group meeting or a board meeting and then someone just goes, we need to do something. Okay. Do we have a plan? No, but we have to do something. It, it's like when people say, RRB needs a rework or RRB needs to be better. And then you, you actually go down, you sit down with them and you say, okay, what do we want to do? Right. What what are the improvements that you'd like to see? And then they have all these grandiose ideas about what they want to see. And then we start getting into the nitty gritty of, you know, how the mechanics would work. And then it all falls apart. So for me, when it comes to put more effort in, I mean, I don't know what that means. Uh, sure. I don't know how much effort they're putting in in the first place. <laughs> like they, they did a, you know, they put a... They did a cool event for Naval, you know, the Sea Voyage event I thought was kind of nice. Uh, they're obviously, you know, the community is asking for bigger stuff. They're adding in bigger stuff. Uh, so, I mean, should they put more effort in? I don't know. I don't know how much effort they're putting in in the first place. 
Do I want to see it grow? Yes. But I think that comes from the community point of view. I think people have to explain why they don't like it or why they do like it, just like people do for ground and air, and then we can get a better mode. I generally think the lower tiers of naval are fun. I enjoy them because I can turn my brain off and just shoot things. The top tier ones, I turn my brain off, but the shoot things is not as quick. So it's just lumbersome and tiresome for me. But I know a lot of people are not like that. So the best thing to do is to voice opinions, is to talk about what you want to see and all of these things. What do you think the new SPAA mechanics in terms of do they make the game too point and click for the SPAA and pointless to bring in uh, planes or tanks considering their costs that only really top tier ones might stand a chance? Uh, in my opinion, planes have been priced out of the meta at top tier. Like it, it's kind of uh, it's kind of as simple as that. You know they've. The, it's been very obvious since helicopters were added that Gaijin have been trying to make people play helicopters. And one of the ways that they did this was obviously through the idea of, uh, you know, uh, the, the idea of pricing them out spawn points wise. The new mechanics for SBAA, I think, are better than the previous mechanics because they're more realistic. But the question is. Is it pointless to bring in planes? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's pointless, but you are definitely making a gamble. And at the end of the day, if you gamble wrong, then you're going to pay for it. I think it's much better now in ground forces to bring ground vehicles, which is good. And yes, there is always going to be a constant battle between AA and air forces, and the way that you limit that is by not giving all the air forces the mechanics that they should have, which we're seeing right now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely an interesting thing. I think right now, uh, I wouldn't bring a plane into top tier. I just don't see the point. I'd rather just get into a tank. Seems a lot better. Uh, do you like Marmite? Yeah, it's alright. Tried it once. It was okay. Don't really have any strong feelings of it, uh, really. The um, yeah, like I don't, I don't get the love it or hate it mentality. Like I remember as a kid, all the adverts were like, "You'll either love it or hate it," and it was like, "No, <laughs> no, it's just, it's all right, it's okay. Like it's just a spread. There are better spreads, definitely. There are worse spreads." Will Guy Jingles ever go back to where War Thunder Ground Forces started, World War II, and say, hmm, that's pretty fucked up. Gotta do something so we bring the good days back to their glory. No. Um, <laughs> because, uh, uh, ro what's the thing? Rose-tinted glasses? When I think back uh, over the years to Ground Forces, I remember... I think maybe the community generally forgets, or not the community, but individuals forget about the constant complaining that people do. Uh, even when Ground Forces came out, there was a few months of bliss, and then bang! You know, why isn't this in the game? Why have you added this? What's with this? You know, blah 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 blah. It's a very critical community when it comes down to it, which isn't a bad thing, you know, I think generally it's a pretty good thing, because it means stuff gets done, but when we talk about, you know, the the uh, the glory days of it, or if you mean like a focus on World War II, no, uh, no, I don't think so, I think a, a lot of it, they look at it as, I mean, this is obviously just my ideas, they look at it as complete, uh, I've, uh, I've seen... A lot of people have this sentiment uh, where the idea is, is, yeah, it's just done. You know, the, the, the sentiment is, you know, what are the World War II vehicles to add? And there's tons of them. Absolutely tons. But the interesting stuff, I think, for a lot of people, like when I hear conversations, at least on the Discord and other areas, is people are interested in the top tier stuff. They're very much interested in the top tier stuff. So for me, I can definitely see 
that being the focus for a lot of people. Hey, Spit. Hope you're doing well, bud. But the... Yeah, so... I'd, are they going to go back to it? I mean, what I would like to see them do uh, is armored cars. And pretty much every nation, apart from Japan, has armored cars at the World War II level. Uh, and also lighter vehicles. So, yeah, I'd like to see it. Why am I a shill? I don't know. Maybe it's just fun. Maybe I can get a house out of it. I don't know. Maybe I can, like, get a visa to Russia easier. Who knows? Mexicans or no Mexicans? Their food's really damn nice, man. As long as it's not too spicy. I actually like, uh... I like all the weird, uh, food that... Weird's wrong. <laughs> I shouldn't say weird. How do I say this? I like the spreads and the... The different, uh... The different guacamoles and, you know, all of these weird things from Mexico. Like, I'd, I like all of the, the platters that they do. I, d I don't necessarily like the really spicy food like some people do. So for me, you know, um, I like Mexican food. And I don't hold prejudicial views really against anyone. So sure, like, uh, let's eat all the Mexican food. What's your opinion on Timmy's or Tim Hortons? I mean, their tea's their tea is okay. It's I mean the the way I see it is gas station uh, tea. Like it, if I'm traveling somewhere, then sure. I am not a coffee drinker. You know, I I've had coffee in the past. Uh, I am uh, imp uh, I am impartial to a uh, iced cappuccino, but the thing at the end of the day is I'm not a huge coffee dude. So the main prospect of Timmy's is, you know, not there for me. The food aspect, their donuts are okay. Uh, I like the fact that they do different deals. I like the charity work that they do. I think that's very important. The the kid snack food that they're doing, I think, is just a straight ripoff uh, right now. <laughs> but the um, yeah, the general food is okay. I. I don't see it as the same type of religion other people do. And I will thank it for teaching me what a double-double is. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I now know what that is. I am worried about the fact that tons and tons of people drink an absolute metric ton of coffee a, a year, though. I think that's becoming that will eventually become an issue. Since more captured vehicles have been added, do you think that we will get the American King Tiger or British Panther? Will we get them? Yes. That's not 100% yes, but that is uh, probably. Or uh, if, if, we, if we go down the logic, eventually, yes. Do I want to see them? No. I don't like captured vehicles. I don't like facing a vehicle that I'm in. I think that takes an aspect of the game away. And promoting that idea through premiums is really annoying. Uh, at least uh, I personally don't like it. So from a Gaijin point of view, yeah, I can easily see them. From my point of view, I would not like to see them. Uh, do you like Australians? The ones I've met seem very nice, aggressive, uh, most of the time, uh, opinionated, which is good. Uh, you've got to be opinionated, uh, or at least, you know, you, you've got to trust in your opinions, I should say. That is how to put it. Uh, but generally, Australians seem very laid back and easy to talk to. The problem is when you get three to four to five of them in a room, and they're worse than Americans when it comes to saying just random crap. So if you isolate one or two, it works very well. If you have four or five to ten, bongos start coming out and fires start getting lit. So <laughs> that's, that's the way I see it. Can I have some cake or cookies? Look, mate, you've seen the size of me. You think I'm sharing? Should APF SDS do more damage, i.e. spore shrapnel more? Uh, 
the the way I normally answer this stuff is if it did historically, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, but the main thing is I don't think it's it's having issues right now. APFSDS is doing crazy amounts of damage. Uh, the I it's very hard if you know where to aim not to one shot a machine with APFSDS, unless you're talking about specific, you know. Uh, you talk about like specific vehicles, but the majority of the time, uh, no, I, I think it's fine. The only round I would say has an issue right now is still APCR. APDS, I know a lot of people talk about the damage it does, but I understand the context of the history of it and why it was created as it was. And in War Thunder, you know, you, you generally have issues <laughs> with the ideas of why it was created, uh, you know, from a, a gameplay damage point of view. But with APCR, yeah, I, I wish it did a bit more. But APFSDS is okay. When do you think Gadge needs to introduce Minor Nations? Next update, next year, uh, year or the year after? <laughs> Uh, I, I might trigger people by saying, well, we already have minor nations. <laughs> but no, no, I wouldn't say that. Um, I would love to see uh, many nations come to the game. I think as somebody who is interested in World War II stuff, the only way that I can see getting more World War II stuff from now on in a big way is through minor nations, right? So we've seen the last patch, the last update, there is one uh there is one world war 2 vehicle that is coming out in there uh which is not a naval vehicle like naval vehicle it doesn't really matter you know when they come out uh but when it comes to ground and air there's the sm92 and that's it you could also fire, throw in the Firecrest, but that's a post-world war 2 vehicle but i suppose its specifications were for world war 2 uh, what else is there? Yeah, so you you have, as I said, like the 1940s and uh, the Type 1939 or whatever it is, or the 36. So there are some World War II vehicles coming in this update, but there aren't a lot. And the only way I can see there being a decent amount is like when Italy was released, right? So Italy was released and we got a bunch of World War II vehicles. And that's cool. They're not all great, but I like the history of them. I know a lot about them. It's nice, you know, reading about them and all of this stuff. I find it much more interesting than the modern things. Uh, so from that point of view, yeah, I, w I would like to see more nations over the next year or so. The question is, when will Gajin do it? Have they confirmed that they're even doing it? They have talked about new nations, but... Once again, it depends on your definition of, uh, you know, major, right? Sweden is a country which, if you look at its history, it's got a naval line, it's got a ground vehicles line, it's got an airline. The only thing it doesn't have hugely is helicopters, right? Would that be seen as a minor nation? Or Romania? I suppose Romania would be seen as a minor nation by today's standards, but in World War II, they were pumping out some rockers, right? And then uh, Hungary is another one, Czechoslovakia. Uh, like, I, I mean, my, my idea of a minor nation is one that you have to connect to another tree in order for it to make sense, right? So uh, in that regard, yeah, I think it would be, um, uh, it would be pertinent for them to look into the idea uh, the, because at some point, like, we're, we're already getting there in tanks. There is, there is not many layers left when you go forward in history for tanks. We're at the 1990s. We're talking 20 years, right? The Americans still use the Abrams. Obviously, it's a different version of it. But, you know, uh, when it comes to play style and when it comes to how it's worked, all you're going to get is more armor, bigger gun. Same with the Leopard. Then you look at the Challenger 2. Britain doesn't have another MBT. We use the Challenger 2 today. So, what do you do there? The Japanese have the Type 10. The Soviets, there's a lot of growth still. They made a lot of vehicles in the 90s and the 2000s. If I hear one more damn thing about that... 
Oh, that's something to bring up. Go and have a look at that bloody uh, non-man turreted Soviet, sorry, not Soviet, Russian tank now, the Armata. They have reduced the amount that they're producing. They have already talked about the issues they're having with the engine and the transmission, and also the inherent issues of a turretless, tur a turretless, uh, a non-man turret. Thank God that it is actually coming out that there are problems with it because it is. I still have to make that video. I, and just basically, there, there are a few videos I need to make. I need to make that one. I need to make one going through the Swedish tests as well. And why it may not be worth just taking them as gospel when you see a screenshot. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, the Armata, if you look at it, uh, it's based off a, a machine from five years ago. And that machine is based off one from five years ago they've been trying to do this design for 40 years if you actually look into the history of the armata and every time a new type of this vehicle comes out in russia everybody loses their minds and thinks it's the next next evolution of tanks and then five years later they, it is either too expensive or they just decide that it's not worth it right and the inherent issues of having a capsule with three men in it in the front of the tank. I don't think people understand how dangerous that is for, for keeping your crew alive. If you put everybody in a small contained compartment, it is very obvious where you shoot this thing now, right? Like with an Abrams, people are spaced out. You know the general layout of it, but when it comes to targeted missiles, or when it comes to targeted fire, it is so easy to kill an Armata. So easy. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll move on from that. Uh, the main thing I was getting at, will they add them? I'm sure they will eventually. But we still have some growing, especially when it comes to tanks, and especially when it comes to aircraft and naval, depending on where they want to go with it. If they want to do the anti-ship missiles and everything like that. When do you think Gaijin needs to, uh, sorry, Tech, can I free Abrams? Uh, no, but I could probably give you a free chocolate bar. Probably got one lying around somewhere. Should the R3 T20 FAHS get its BR moved up along with getting APDS belts? Why does it need an APDS belt? Uh, if its BR gets moved up. You can't maximum protection. There is nothing that can stop specific bullet, uh, specific, specific uh, munitions right now. You've got to think about angles. And also, you've got to think about weight. You've also got an issue with an unarmed, unarmored turret. So you could just shoot it, nail the mechanism of the armata, and then it can't do anything. Like a, a lot of people have talked about how the turret is light, and that's a good thing. Well, it's great until somebody shoots it. And then what you find is the Armata is now completely out of action. And you've given up the control of everything to the opposing enemy. You can't fix stuff like that so quickly. Right, moving on. The R3 T20, uh, I don't think it needs APDS belts. It could easily go up in BR if it wants. I think it's fine where it is. The The way I look at AA is it only really matters about what its bottom BR is. Because a lot of AA can actually be uh, pushed upwards, right? So you, you can artificially increase their BR by just running them with a bigger lineup. Like uh, the Whirlwind or the Oswin, they do well at higher BRs. Uh, the R3T20 is the same way. So I don't think it needs a higher BR. Uh, just keep the belts that it has. I'm a proponent of taking away tank killing capabilities from AA machines. I much, much prefer uh, the... I much... Uh, what was I saying? I would much prefer if they increase the oh, if they increase the damage that AA vehicles can do to barrels and tracks, and then just made it so they can't kill tanks 
or you know it's it's a lot harder for them to kill tanks they don't get hvap belts they don't get apds belts i think that would be so much better for gameplay and it would mean that some they would have a dedicated role right so no on the apds belts i think it's fine at the br that it's at you know simple as that can i pet you uh if you can find me a guide for new players after 1.87 what do you mean a guide for new players? What do you mean just everything? I. I mean I do have some videos on my channel. There's two things to look out for. So the first one is the beginners guides, which are sat right here. Some of them are a little bit old, but a lot of them go into key concepts of the game. Uh, there is also I have uh, yeah this playlist so. You can have a look at these, and it will go through key concepts. Um, the other thing is, of course, uh, if there are any new mechanics, I'll make sure to show how to use them and all that stuff. I do need to add stuff to that beginner's guides, uh, but there is other stuff like, you know, stuff like this, <laughs> like this video. Uh, there are stuff that you can, you know, look at, but just a, a whole guide, like, you need to tell me specifics. Scovinci a noob and doesn't deserve to be here. Covinci is actually one of the best tankers I've ever played with. Um, he's he is really good. Um, answering questions as it says on the bottom of the screen in the Discord. I will eventually I will every so often glance over at the chat to make sure that nothing is going crazy wrong. Um, but yeah, Covinci is an, an amazing ground forces player. A very good tanker, very good set of eyes. I'm very impressed with the skill set. Do you think Gaijin should add the BT-42? I do. Uh, the problem is what tree do you put it in? Uh, a lot of people have said put it in the Soviet tree. I understand that sentiment. Um, I also understand the Finnish and uh, Russian <laughs> relationship. I think is probably the best way of putting it. It's not the best. Uh, so some people may be uh, some people may be a bit annoyed if they do that. I think it would be much better to create a Finnish tree, which there is enough ground vehicles out there to do it. So I would like to see that. Do you think the Tech uh, WS can start doing the squadron battles? If yes, they will be competitive or more relaxing. Uh, we we created two squadrons. So you got the Tech WS and then the Tech ES. The ES idea was to be the competitive one, and the WS was to be the social one. The problem that we found is it was impossible to get a dedicated group of people together in order to do squadron battles. And the sentiment basically was, between a lot of players, is why should we try? Because those people over there have been on top since the beginning. And I understand this sentiment. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one which, you know, it's, it, it makes sense, but at the same time, it's disheartening. And unfortunately, uh, the leadership or the old leadership of the tech, the techies didn't do what at least I expected had to be done in order to push it forward. So now instead, we just have the two squadrons. They're going to be used to get the vehicles for everyone. And, uh, you know, as long as, you know, people are active <laughs> when it comes to it. So that's, you know, that's uh, that's the way we're doing it. Squadron battles, at least for me, is not on my radar. Uh, but I am not the person who runs the squadrons. Mofo and Lobster are the two individuals who do. So if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to know about or ask them about uh, it, that's who to go to. Who will start World War Three? China, Trump, or Gaijin? <laughs> uh, the European Union. Because uh, if you've read any of their books, um, and what I mean is like Verhofstadt's autobiography or his plans for the future or Juncker's, what you'll find is the reason why they're consolidating power uh, and pushing for this army idea and trying to expand Europe is because they want to create a competitor to America. And they are okay with the idea of doing it through force. 
More people need to read these guys' books. I'm not kidding. Go find their books. Go read them. They are scary. And you can understand why they think the way that they do. But I don't want to see a competitor to America right now. I like America being the world hegemon. And if it comes from China, if it comes from Russia, there are inherent issues with those countries, which means that it's very hard for them to become number one, right? The Chinese one is the fact that the economy is internalized. The Russian one is the fact that, well, <laughs> they are at least now doing better in their food markets, but that was definitely a problem. And the fact the majority of Russia is wasteland. And, or mar well, not marshes, but it's just uninhabitable, right? So it's very hard for it to become a world, superstar, world superpower. It has to take over places in order to be more powerful, like the USSR. So when I look at it, the only competitor really would be the European Union. And I'm, that's what I'm worried about, you know. Uh, best premium recommendations for tanks and planes. Uh, I don't really like giving recommendations, but, um, if, I mean, it, it's obviously very specific to, like, the, depending on what you want to grind out and stuff like that. Uh, Cobra King's fun, obviously. Um, I should do, like, a one tech tree, you know, premium that everybody should have, or, <laughs> you know, something like that. Uh, the XP38G is pretty fun. Uh, the oh the the AC4, uh, the Australian uh, the Australian tank that's fun. The Key44, no, it's not the Key44. The A6M5 Otsu, that's a pretty nice one. But yeah, I'd, I should probably go through them and just say this is the one I enjoyed. This is why. Blah blah blah. Maybe I might do that in a later video. What are your opinions on more light cruisers? Uh, I'm not personally interested in them. If it will get people playing more ships, then that's good. I don't think it will. I think a lot of people who want these larger ships, who say they want these larger ships, are people who are either chasing a pipe dream, or when it actually becomes a reality, still won't play them. Um, I've seen this attitude in the past when it comes to War Thunder, begging for something to be added, and then when it is added, going, oh, well, this is shit, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things. I would much prefer um, working on all the nations first and then going bigger, uh, but uh, if they add more light cruisers, then we'll see. I'd, I don't know what else to say about it, really. The light cruisers that they've added are very similar in playstyle. There is obviously a power creep idea going on right now. The reason why I haven't done a video on the HMS or the, the New Zealand HNZ CS or whatever it is, the Leander, is because I'm just annoyed uh, that they picked it. Uh, I'm not kidding. I am annoyed that that was what they went to. I don't know why they didn't pick the town class. It's a much better choice and much more, let's say, balanced when we look at them. But yeah, uh, I don't personally care about light cruisers. If it's something that will attract more people to naval, sure. Let's go ahead. Let's have a bit of fun. Uh, let's see. Can you have an onion? Are you Shrek? If you're Shrek, sure. Can you help me out with buying a new PC? I still don't know which one to get. Oh, collab? Uh, the best way to collab uh, with me is, since I'm pretty much buried with everything right now, as I said before, I have pretty much officially run out of time to do new things. So if I, if I need to do something else, I need to cut something, which I'm fine with doing, right? But if you want to do like a collab or something like that, the best thing to do is to come to me and say, hey, got this idea, uh, let's have a chat about it, and let's go forward from there. Like, I need people to come to me to pitch ideas. I can't go to others and pitch ideas because I'm already full, right? I already have 
tons of different ideas that I want to go through. And with the collab stuff, the main thing I want to do is War Thunder Talks, where you just kind of sit down and have a chat about what's going on. Can you pet Sif? Uh, you probably have to ask his consent. Uh, what do you think about tanks which are too modern to be correct? Should they be in the game? Uh, when it was announced that we were getting the M1 Abrams, the Challenger 1, the Leopard 2K, and the T-64B, was it? I think? Because the T-64A came out before with the MBT and the KPZ. I said it was a bad idea um, because there will be constant, constant debate and constant anger in the community because of the issues with the values. If a community doesn't know something, and it is impossible to know, what ends up happening is you create a polarized community. You create one side, which believes in one set of ideas and what they see as facts, and then you create another side, which is seen as their, their facts are right. And, and what you do is you just create this constant battle and war of the two sides against each other. And then you see stuff like the Swedish tests being seen as legitimate sources when it is literally a PowerPoint presentation. That would not stand up anywhere. The journalistic standard for sourcing is three sources. That is what is taught in school. But for some reason now, when it comes to Leopard 2A5, when it comes to all these other vehicles, because it is the only source out there, people are clinging to it as fact. And you can't do that in these scenarios. And all it does is create bitterness between people. And that's all I've seen over the last year. Now, from a money-making point of view, yeah, it's probably good. A lot of people resonate a lot more with these new ground vehicles. You can see, because the main discussions, the main topics, they're around them. It's as simple as that. So it's obviously good from Gaijin's point of view, but from my point of view, no, it's horrible. Because let's say they decide to change something, right? Let's say they decide to change an armor setting, uh, change a ballistic setting, change uh, an engine. How do you submit a bug report? Because they can just turn around and just dismiss you no matter what you do. And that was my initial issue with these vehicles, and it still is the issue. In my head, they're not real. They're fictional, completely fictional, because there is no way that Gaijin can know what is real, and there is definitely no way that the community can know what is real. So we're just living in a land of people throwing crap at each other. Because if they don't do that, then they can't be right. And another issue with the human condition <laughs> is that they want to be right. Everyone wants to be right. It doesn't feel good to be wrong. So people cling to the absolute craziest things to make sure that they're right in a circumstance. And when you throw that idea on top of the fact that, um, what's the word? If you, if you throw that idea on top of the fact that you can never know that you are right, you create factions and it creates resentment. And it's not good. Um, but as I said, from a money-making point of view, yeah, sure. From my personal point of view, no, I think it's, it's an awful idea. And that is what I said a year ago, and that is what I still believe today. Tech, what kind of uh, new content can we expect from you in the future? I've enjoyed almost all videos that you've released. I'd like to see more coverage for suggestions. Uh, I want to do more past the developer stuff and uh, hone in on specifics uh, when it comes to it. So if there's one really cool vehicle, I want to do more history videos, but um, the, what I found while doing the history videos is they get a lot less, um, views, but the problem is not that, because I don't really care about that. What I care about is the fact that it 
creates a ton of weird interactions between people. So with the Italian videos, I had people completely taking what I said out of context. When it came to the uh, float plane video I did, the German one, the exact same thing happened. And I don't know why, and it kind of makes me not want to do that stuff. Because if you get that kind of reaction, it doesn't feel good. And because it's so many people doing it, you can't individually talk to all of them and go, no, this is what I meant, blah, 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 kind of like the issue we brought up before. So I like making those videos. I just have to deal with the mental block that I'm personally having while dealing with that side of things, with the misinterpretations and the misquotings and all of this. I need to just kind of put that over there and just understand that it's always going to happen and just push forward with what I want to make. Um, I would like to do more podcasts, uh, just sitting down and talking with people, whether it's just random community members or live streams that you see right now. And uh, when it comes to... Oh, I'll get through all the questions, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I might have to, you know, slow down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, what, we're in an hour 15? What? No way. Anyway, uh, I'll make sure not to look at the time again. So yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I, I would like to do more podcast stuff. I would like to do more just sit down and chatting with people. I think when we when we did that stream, yeah, you remember that stream that, uh, was it like a week ago um, or two weeks ago where we did like the, oh, the we restreamed the War Thunder stream? That was cool as hell. Uh, we, we just sat there. We had a chat with people and just enjoyed ourselves, you know, and it, it was cool talking about what was coming, giving opinions, looking at chat, and, you know, just interacting in that way. I would love to do more stuff like that. I think that was, that was really fun. Uh, do you like pizza, and if so, what type? <laughs> uh, I generally like meaty pizzas, uh, with, uh, well, cheese and meat is obviously the combo. I also am a heathen. I like ham and pineapple pizza. I think it's refreshing after a long day. Uh, so, yeah, come at me. Uh, the other stuff is, as I said, meat feast or some kind of chicken supreme pizza. You know, kind of chicken with some kind of garlic sauce. That's very nice. One thing I wish uh, they did over here is garlic bread, but in a pizza. Uh, because there, there is just something in England about like garlic pizzas they're really nice and people actually started expanding a little bit uh, just when I left they were doing like garlic and cheese pizza or garlic and tomato pizza and it was really nice but yeah that that doesn't exist here this isn't really a question more like a quest go ahead and read some Italian tank names what do you mean that's uh, Italian tank names Okay, <laughs> let's go through some of them. So we got the Caro Armato L3, Caro Armato L3 35 LF, Lancia Fiami, uh, the Fiat 3000, Caro da Soto. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? The Caro Armato P40, Caro Pacente P, <laughs> I think, and the Caro Armato. There you go, there's some tank names. Uh, where are you from, Canada or Europe? I'm from Britain. Uh, I'm from Yorkshire. And if you don't know where Yorkshire is, uh, you should, because it's God's country, uh, as every good person knows. Uh, but this is Yorkshire. Yeah, Yorkshire fence and deck. That's exactly what I wanted, you silly heathen. Right, let's just go around the bloody world and do it like this. <laughs> so this is Yorkshire right here, this area here and uh, it's God's country and if anybody uh, tells you that it's not they're wrong I love Yorkshire I wish I could go back very soon if there was literally any jobs there at all boobs or ass um, I am a proportion guy and don't really have a favourite but it is all about the proportion of the woman 
Uh, so, if everything fits, is the best way of putting it. Nutella pizza? Jesus, that doesn't sound good. Do you like horror games? I do. Uh, I enjoy playing them. I kind of just laugh at them, though. Uh, and I think it's a coping mechanism. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. Uh, what is your guess of when the update drops? Um, I'll probably give it a week. I won't be surprised if it drops, like, mid next week, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've never... When, when I think about Europe, I don't class the UK as part of Europe. I just never have. It's really... It's a different place to me. Can I pet the mods? Uh, you probably have to ask them, too. I'm sure some of them would enjoy it, though. Is dog in fact a dog? Uh, from all reports, uh, we did a, a CSI investigation. We found out that dog is a Labrador. Uh, he's one of the best Labradors in the world. And uh, <laughs> he definitely knows what he's doing. Do you think the Leopard is the right tank that has been added? I think it isn't because of the extreme armor. Uh, well, as we talked about before, they can kind of make it up as they go along. So, if they want to reduce the armor, they can. Uh, there is no... Once again, I know people bring up the Swedish test because it's the best we thing we have right now. That, to me, is not good enough. Uh, from a... I don't know. Maybe it's just because of, you know, what I learned at uni and what I learned at school and what I do for work. Like, that, that ain't good enough. I'm sorry, uh, in my estimations. So... Uh, I would have, there, there are versions between the 2A4 and the 2A5 which I think would have fit better. So, it would be nice if they, um, if they picked them instead, but unfortunately they didn't. I don't think it's the right tank right now. Then again, I don't think, uh, the, I don't think the, <sighs> I don't think the T the the T2 is the right pick right now, but it has to be done at some point. And if we and just with the Leopard 2A5, if it does come out and it's absolutely crazy, right? Then at least this should hasten the fixing, you know, fixing of it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, hopefully, or it will just get like a forty thousand repair cost. One of the two. Do you think uh, some limited form of aerial refuel could be seen in War Thunder? Uh, whoops. As more planes are added with the capability, maybe not forcing, uh, maybe not forcing players to the point of actually hooking up, but to the point of where they maintain distance behind the refueling craft and wait the allotted time to be refueled. The problem with this is it's such a niche thing, right? It, it's such a small part of aerial uh, stuff. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Parts of aerial combat, uh, maybe that's the way to put it. So, for me, uh, unless we're talking from an enduring confrontation point of view, and even then the maps are nowhere near big enough, there would be no point uh, unless you really wanted to take a min minimal amount of fuel, and then you'd just spend the majority of the time trying to refuel in the air. I don't think it's required... Uh, overall, I think that it would be much better if it wasn't the case. Uh, that, that was it. I like the idea of fuel being uh, a, 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 like a constant in the game. So if you run out of fuel, it's kind of your own fault. Like it, it's a good limiting factor, you know. Uh, so I, I'm fine with it not existing. The games aren't long enough for it as well. What kind of cult would you like to start? Um, I wouldn't like to start a cult, but if I did, uh, it would be the caveman cult. We would all just find our own cave and just live in it and have meetings on, you know, once a month. Make sure that nobody has invaded anybody else's cave. Are we all doing okay for food? How are the bongo drums going? Have we found the new sound yet? You know, stuff like that. So, yeah, the caveman cult. And then there's the, yeah, there is there is already a cult, uh, <laughs> but uh, we won't talk about that. Uh, will you update NB uh, cult's constitution? <laughs> uh, 
The neckbeard cult. Yeah, I mean, we might have to since I don't have a neckbeard anymore, really. Uh, could you show us one day how you make your videos? Uh, I did actually a stream a while back. Um, hey, I'll do it right now if you want. <laughs> so, uh, let's say it's the video from today, right? So this is video pad. I normally use video pad for these things. So first of all, the two merchandise things. And then we go to videos, recordings, this one. So this was the change log. And then what I do is I separate the audio from it, run it through audacity, remove the background sound, because as you can hear now, there's some background sound. So there's the change log thoughts. Then if we go to Seagate expansion, which is my one of my one terabyte hard drives, and we go to here, and intros. You can see all the intros that I have have over time. So we just pick like one of them. And then you pick one of the content disclaimers. Uh, and then a main outro. Put them in. Still need my sleep? Nah. Uh, so, bish, bash, and then because these are quite aggressive intros, we would half the sound, because I can just tell by the audio. Then we put this one in, and obviously all of this is, um, uh, and then you just unlink this. This is all pre-done because I've already processed this video, so it has a saving of it on file. You find where I start. I know I start here, so I just do this. Cut that. Then put a fade in. Find the end point. And this is obviously a standard video. This is not one that I do any editing for or anything like that. Uh, cut this right at the end. Find the main outro. Put this on. This always goes to 40% uh, because I like to end with a lower than usual percentage. Put that to fade. And then images. For some reason, this is always set to 3. So I have to always put it up to 5 which is kind of annoying. I don't know how to set this as default, you know, five. Um, bish, bash. Oh, and also while doing audio, um, if I sneeze or something like that inside, I will make sure to cut it out uh, and I make sure to leave a lot of empty space so I know where I sneezed. But most of the time, you know. Uh, I, I don't do that. I just, everything is done in one recording. Uh, so that's how I like doing it. Oops. So crossfade and then effects on these because they're way too big. Load the file. And I have all these presets for specific things. Do, do, do. Okay. And that is one video ready to go. Now all I have to do is export it right here. And then I click create a title for it. And then uh, it goes to here and then I upload it. So yeah, <laughs> that's basically that's basically how it goes. Um, for other stuff, uh, for more edited stuff, like the history videos, I have Vegas, uh, so I use that. But if it's just for a commentary video or like the dev server stuff, I use uh, VideoPad because it compresses well, it keeps the high definition, and uh, also it's a lot faster than Sony Vegas. All right, so yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, you think you could change me back to being a native author, as in separate like before? Oh, that's the title. Um, do you like Poland? And if so, would you invade it? Poland is an interesting place. Um, let's see if I can find it, actually. Uh, because I haven't been to Poland. I have a sister who went to Poland. And 
uh, one of the things that she had uh, was some soup. And we tried this soup. Tasted like absolute... Uh, not very nice. And I don't think I've ever had it again. Yeah, the Zurich was the thing. Uh, that's really my only experience uh, with Poland, <laughs> you know, when it comes to it. I would like to go to that area of the world more. I think it uh, it would be a fun place to go around. It is generally cheaper, uh, which is good. And also, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of fine with the culture. I've, I've never really run into any issues with people from that area. So it would be nice to go around at some point. I've traveled a lot around Western Europe. So I think it might be time to go around, uh, you know, uh, the other parts. The only place I have no real interest in going in the world is... Uh, I haven't really built up the interest in South America yet. Because the, the history part of it, which is why you'd go, right? I'm not too interested in, so... Yeah. Do you think the FBI are watching you? Uh, probably. I think they're watching us all, to be honest. I mean, after all those NSA leaks, like, four to five years ago, it is very obvious what is going on. Uh, what are chickens, and are chickens our natural enemy? Only if they put up a fight. Otherwise, they are just prey. Are you looking forward to Gamescom this year? Also, what do you think Gaijin will unveil? That is interesting. Uh... I'm looking forward to Gamescom. Uh, it's it's actually really fun covering it on the channel. Uh, so it's very similar to the um, it's very similar to the live stream that we did a few weeks ago, where we can cover it, we can discuss it, we can have a have a look uh, have a look at all the stuff. I thought last year uh, the addition of helicopters. I had a lot of uh, a lot of pessimism about them and i think that pessimism is required uh now that we see the current well no the current state of them now is okay but when they released i think people forget how bad they were uh, they were not good uh for the balance of the game and they still kind of aren't but at least they're in a better place um so what they'll reveal this year i mean one of the things on the radar you know submarines is one mine layers uh is another one we could have modern day jets. Uh, you could have more missile options. Uh, you could have, as I said, stuff like armored cars, lighter vehicles. Uh, you could even go futuristic. What if they want to step further? That would be weird. <laughs> like, you know, like futuristic vehicles. But I think for me. The, um, yeah, I think for me, for Gamescom, it's probably going to be submarines or something similar to that. I would like to see, uh, World War One stuff, and by that I mean aircraft. Not too interested in the tanks because they weren't really designed for fighting each other, but aircraft wise, I think it would be really fun. How's my day going? It's going all right. I'm a little bit tired from the work I've done this week, um, but. I, if I needed to, I still have more gears to go. I haven't really uh, been. Uh, if if I really if if I was really having issues, I could pump up the amount of energy I put in my system a lot, and then I'd be fine. But overall, yeah, I'm doing all right. What is your guess on April Fools? Uh, a system which is similar to the furry tiger one from last year, which I really hope it isn't. Or at least it's more fair this year, so there's only, like, one vehicle. Uh, because if if there was... Uh, since there was two vehicles, it was nearly impossible to get both, right? And I don't want that situation again. I would rather have a... Just one vehicle. Clown cars would be fun. I'd like to see clown cars. Or miniatures. This is another thing I was thinking of. What about, like, toy soldiers? Or, um... You know, like, you know how you used to get those armies of green men? God, this is going to be an interesting Google search. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Yeah, these boys. 
What if we did something like this, uh, where you control individuals, but you could only move side to side? And you could only shoot side to side, so you could, you'd could you have to try and line up yourself with the person. Then some people get bazookas and stuff like that. Like, what if they just put enlisted in a funny way in-game? I, I think that would be pretty fun. Alright, let's see. Next question. What country lineup do you think is the most powerful at top tier? Probably not the best person to ask at top tier, but if we're talking about right now, as of today, um, I think it's the Americans. And then, if you, if we're just looking at a whole lineup, yes, Americans. When the update hits, though, I still think it'll be Americans, but I don't think it'll be because of the tanks. I think it'll be because of the helicopters still and the advantage that they have in that regard. The Tunguska is good against helicopters, but you still need them to spawn. And are people going to spawn them first spawn? I don't think they will. It's either going to be the Soviets or America. I know we're talking a lot about how the Leopard 2A5 in its current state is crazy, and it is, but it's one vehicle out of many. So for me, I'd probably give it to the Soviets. It's between those two, uh, no matter what happens. Now, people will probably play a lot of Germany and America, so it will it will seem like it's them, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it probably won't be. It will be the Soviets or America. Why are we here? Just to suffer. Yeah, probably. Who knows? I don't know why we're here. I don't like to think about it. It hurts my brain. I agree that Tank RB should have aircraft in. It's a good idea, but would you also agree that Cass is powerful? At top tier, no. At every other tier, it is very powerful. And the only way to deal with it is uh, to, first of all, address the issues uh, that I've at least personally brought up. The 4-7 to 7-7 gap that some nations have. So, uh, the British and the Soviets, right? They have these gaps. On top of this... Um, you need to promote more of a culture of people bringing out AA. Now that you've lowered, now that Gajin has lowered the spawn points for everything, uh, it's now pushed more people to, uh, God, what's the word? Uh, more people to take two medium tanks instead of a medium tank and an AA. You know, stuff like that. So for me, I think you would have to somehow give more of a bonus to AA. But I don't know what you'd do. But Cass is powerful. I'm not sure it's too powerful. Because what I see a lot of the time that happens is you get an initial advantage through the Cass, and then because you don't have the boots on the ground, the other team will win. And therefore, the Cass is done really well, but it hasn't dominated the match. Happy VE Day. Happy VE Day to you. What do you mostly look forward to in update 1.87? The different formations of radar. And the destructive terrain. Not terrain, sorry. Uh, buildings. <laughs> I want to see how far they push that idea. Now we have maps which are full, nearly fully destructible. Like uh, Alaska. Uh, American Desert. There are very few things that you can't annihilate. And I'm really looking forward to see how far they push it, if they do. Uh, the other thing that I'm interested in is to see how these squadron ideas work. Because I want to see how much effort you're going to have to really go for to grind these things. Because I know it's going to be high. But I don't know how high it's going to be. So... It'll be fun looking into how that works. Uh, a lot of people will say, you know, modern MBTs or jets. That ain't my bag, baby. It never will be. Should Gaijin add interiors to tanks, like how aircraft have cockpit view? Uh, it's way too much work. Way too much work. For not a lot of payoff. If you want a really good game that does this really well, uh, the... I don't think you can get it anymore. I should do a playthrough of this game, actually. Right. 
so playthrough of this game do 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 where is it here we go so red orchestra 2 heroes of stalingrad i will do a playthrough at some point maybe i'll stream it who knows hey bud uh soviet how you doing uh but the there are some missions in here where you play in tanks and you get to control the whole tank either from the commander, the driver, the gunner point of view and it's and they do the whole of the insides of the tanks. The graphics aren't as good as War Thunder, but they're really really nice to look at. So, if you want that immersive experience it exists. The problem is we have nearly a thousand tanks in War Thunder. Can you imagine how much effort that is? That's crazy. I mean, we kind of have interiors of tanks a little bit here and there modelled, but overall they're not modelled at all. So, for me, I'd probably say, no, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think... Uh, I don't think it would be worth it to do. Uh, let's see... Do you think the Type 10 will come to the game, or another B7A2? I think uh, the Type 10 will come. From everyone I've talked to about the Type 10, the way that they describe it is it actually has very similar armor to the Type 90. The only real difference uh, between it is the, uh, the external armor that you can add to it. And the reason why the Japanese don't really build heavier tanks when it comes to their armor or weight is because of the terrain that they actually have to fight on if anybody decided to invade them. So for me, I can easily see it in-game. Um, the, <laughs> the problem with it is, though, uh, it's kind of like the H1Z, right? So the moment you put it in the game, you will get calls for similar vehicles of similar eras. And that is a problem. That is a real big problem because there are many of its contemporaries that came out at the same time are so much better than it, or at least should be, I should say. I would like to see uh, if they made some more B7A2s. The D4Y4 just got past the development, um, so at least that's a similar vehicle. The B7 is the B7 is a really fun one, actually. I I really enjoy that one. Uh, let's see. Mm. Right, here we go. <clears throat> Subtech, I've got a few Wiraboo questions for you. Do you think with the addition of the new radar mechanics that we'll finally see in the near future ME262 Night Fighter variants? If I recall, there was a single seat variant with the Liechtenstein SN2 radar and, with, and was widely known. B, B-1A, U1 two-seater with the FUG218 Neptune radar. Uh, or Neptune, I should say. Yes, uh, I think we will. It makes sense to add them now, right? Uh, before, if you added them, they would just be heavier ME262s and nobody would be interested in them. But, if you now have a mechanic which is based around it, it makes sense, right? It makes sense to do it, so... Yeah, uh, why not? Do you think the Focke-Wulf 190 V32 slash Tau 152 HO with the MG213 would be an interesting plane for the 60 plus battle rating range to possibly give the super props their... A thing to look out for and to possibly fill a gap at that BR. Uh, I mean, the the problem is with planes like that is do you go on flight tests or do you go on what the uh, manufacturers believed would happen? Because if you go on to the manufacturers, what you know, manufacturers believed to happen, uh, then yes. If you go on flight tests, no. Would the Heinkel 280 be a nice buffer between the Heinkel Focke-Wulf line to draw distance away from the MiG-15? And which variant with what engine would you like to see? Now I have to refresh my mind on the Heinkel 280. I think I know what it is, but it's worth having a look. Yes, it's this bloody thing. <laughs> uh, if I remember rightly, did any actually get flight tested? 
I don't think they did, did they? Oh no, some of them did. I don't know which version, but uh, a few were flight tested, so why not? I wonder why they don't use a picture on uh, on Wikipedia. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, sure. As long, my criteria is as long as it was built and tested in some way that we can work out, you know, what its characteristics were. Then yes, let's uh, let's stick it in. <clears throat> Would you like to see the Panzerkampfwagen 2748 Oswald game? It was a captured Matilda that has its turret replaced with a gun shield and is armed with a 50. <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, I I like the you know like the Soviet Matilda with the 76. I think that's a really cool addition. I also like the idea of um, like the B1 BIS, uh, which has the big artillery piece on it. I think all of these are really cool ideas, and they should definitely uh, be added to the game. You know, they, I'm, I'm fine with versions of uh, national machines which were modified, right? Uh, so, like the, the KV-1 German with the long 75, I think that's a great example. That's a really fun machine, yeah? Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's a really cool machine, and I'm happy that it was added, just like I would be with this one. I just don't like complete copies. Uh, Electo, maybe, can carry a six-pounder on 95. Was sent to Germany in 1945. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was. But yeah, the Electo would be cool. Uh, it's just... Uh, I gotta get my men here some bras before they start freaking out with each other. <laughs> Forgot I had that, but the um yeah it's uh when it comes to this machine, it would be nice to see it in game. I don't really know where it fits uh, because if I remember, it wasn't too quick, so it would be kind of slow. And obviously, no armor it could be machine gun to death. But we have a bunch of vehicles like that in game, so maybe a cool event vehicle. I'd like to see it. Hey Tech, I'm Camphor Stern on your Discord. No quest on your Discord. No questions. Just love the content, and want to support the channel. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move on. But yeah, I would like to see this. I would. I know that they were fully tested, so it'd be good. I'm wondering if you've heard of a game called Heliborn. If so, do you think Gaijin can or will implement something similar to the utility helicopters in the game? Basically allowing you to place AI troops to guard the area you drop them off at and shoot at other AIs as well as players. They really give got to give the non-attack helicopters something that they can use to make them a viable thing to play other than something to simply get rid of. I would uh, prefer this mechanic be given to IFVs. Uh, stuff like the Warrior, uh, the Bradley, the BMP. I think this mechanic could work really well for them. And then, uh, once we've worked out that it works, <laughs> then you give it to the helicopters. I would rather see scouting helicopters uh, instead of just drop troops everywhere. I think that could be something that works. So maybe we do that instead. You know, I think that would be nice. Uh, but overall, I like the idea, but I think it should be for IFVs. About the Swedish tank and plane tree, what is your opinion about the tree? Good, bad. Uh, very good. Uh, especially the independent one made. I think all of the tech trees when it comes to Sweden are really cool. I'm very happy that there's a fully fledged one out there, and I hope that uh, Sweden use it. Uh, sorry, Gajin use it to create a, a tree. About Finland, which tree should Finnish planes and tanks be added to? Minor axis tree, German tree, or Swedish tree? Well, no matter what you do, you annoy somebody, right? Uh, unless you make an independent. I would personally put it in uh, some form of Scandinavian tree. I know a lot of people advocate for an independent uh, Finnish tree, 
And I understand that idea from the point of view of the Swedish. I don't think the Finnish have enough vehicles across the board. And what I mean by that is the four separate types of you know vehicles we have. Ground, air, ship, helicopters. I don't think they have enough. Uh, so I think it would be better if uh, they were tagged on to some form of Scandinavian tech tree. And I know I'm going to have a ton of people saying, oh, it's not in Scandinavia. Stop lying to yourselves, please. <laughs> Just accept the fact. Accept it that you are part of it. Embrace it like the Irish did. Wait, no, that didn't go too well. Anyway, uh, flamethrowers on small boats. I do like the idea of Greek fire. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be fun. But I don't think you'd get close enough, uh, <laughs> to be honest, to use it. Um, I'm still struggling with rockets on boats. I think they're completely useless. So, yeah. Uh, simple as that. Sounds like Vietnam. Next, we just need napalm. Well, yeah. What do you think of subclasses for ships like destroyer, escort, frigate, sloop, which are smaller or around the size of a destroyer? I think it would be lovely to see them. I hope. They, they did talk about... Uh, adding uh, stuff like this. I mean, we technically already have frigates in the game, uh, such as the 159 is a, I believe it's a light frigate, uh, and the one that they're adding to the squad thing is also a frigate, so we have them, they're just not called them, you know? <laughs> so, yes, I'd, I would love to see uh, these added as well. Uh, are you the pillow in your relationship? Uh, yes. Uh, hey, can you talk about the APDS buffs? Uh, they seem really good uh, for certain machines. I only really saw a few of them. A lot of people pointed out the Conqueror one that I saw. I would have to do a more in-depth look at uh, the different ones. So, you know, I I don't have a full opinion on them. Uh, the Conqueror was fun to play before. Now it's fun to play again. Uh, so... Yeah, that's basically how I see it. Uh, I, will it massively affect some? Maybe. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see. I I have no idea. Like the the with with the new with the new equations, the way I saw it before was a lot of stuff was changed, but there was no vehicles apart from the early French stuff, where. I felt like the change really mattered a lot, you know. It it didn't seem to, it didn't seem to matter that, um, you know, it got ten more millimeters of pen or ten less. It could still pen the same stuff. It didn't really change that much. So in in minor or micro examples, it will matter. In macro, it probably won't. And also, some of those pens uh, on the dev server for APDS were kind of crazy. And if they come to live. I mean, we might be cooking with gas, but I doubt they do come to life. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. Can you see the Chally 2 getting its armor package? And what you're streaming on? Well, YouTube. Uh, I should have specified that. I never do. Uh, tech, put me in. Put me in. I have so much. No! We can talk... We need to do an independent War Thunder talks. Because I can't be sat here for like six hours. <laughs> uh, the I think what they'll do is they'll just do a Challenger 2 Mark II and give it the armor package because as, as I said before there isn't an extra step really for the British so they're going to have to come up with variants which are around top tier and that is one of them I know they did exactly the same with the Challenger 1 it was kind of silly but they did it and they're going to do exactly the same for the Challenger 2. Besides from the armor and penetration values of top tier being guessed by Guardian, do you think the mobility is somewhat accurate? Um, <laughs> well, once again, of course it's going to be a guess. It's all classified. But I suppose, yes, it would be more accurate. The other thing is, is a lot of stuff has limiters on them. So the Abrams have limiters on their uh, engines. And I believe Chally's do as well. I would have to check that though. But I definitely know that Abrams do. And it's so they basically don't tear themselves apart, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things that um, mobility-wise, 
it will be closer uh, to reality than the other two, but it still, you know, won't be fully there. Besides, uh, just a reminder to drink some water. I should drink some water, but I'm lazy as hell. And um, I had some really flat ginger ale, so I'm going to pour that instead. you got to love really flat ginger ale. I've basically been drinking this bottle here through the dev server stuff, so I'm very happy to share this. It has been uh, as much of a help to me as everything else, uh, keeping the <laughs> keeping the voice okay. <laughs> you got a snowball mic now? Oh, good. Well, let's set up a War Thunder talk. What are your thoughts on adding uh, lower tier jets uh, like the Northrop F-89 Scorpion or the Bell P-59 Aero Comet? Also, did you see the new skins for the F-100? I did. There was the uh, the brown and green skin and then there was the Stars and Stripes skin, as I'll call it. I thought uh, with the... Well, sorry. I have advocated for the Aero Comet for a long time. Uh, I think the reason why it would be great in game is because it would be similar to like the Yak 17s, Yak 15s, and I generally like those jets a lot. So yeah, it would be um, it would be nice to see them uh, overall. Uh, I think when it comes to other nations and stuff like that, because of how the Aero Comet is and stuff like the Yak 15P, I don't really think there has to be true tech tree uh, different ones. Uh, I don't think. So yeah, it's um it would be it makes sense to add them in. Uh let's see. High tech, would you like to see more post World War II anti air vehicles in lower tiers to fill all the nation's gaps? If they exist, this is the problem, right? So for Britain for Britain there isn't uh there isn't one. Like, I, I don't, unless you add in the skink, but that's not post-World War Two. But there, there really isn't one, because the Doctrine never really allowed it to exist. And this is, <laughs> this is the problem. Uh, when it comes to the Soviet one, yes, it would be nice to see another BTR version, variant, or the ZSU 372. That could also come in. So overall, yeah, uh, I would be fine with them filling it out. I just don't think they exist all the time where they're needed. Click on the blue text. Oh, okay. Tech, would you like to see American, German teams with post-war BRs, or would that be unbalanced overall, you think, starting from 7.3 onwards, or 7.0 up to current top tier? Right. Uh, it would be nice to see. Um, let's talk about why that isn't always the case. So, the first thing to take into account... Uh, when we're talking about this, is the the fact that the world is not balanced, and also the people in War Thunder are also not balanced. And what I mean by this is we do not have parity of population between each of the uh, each of the nations. So in order for this to work, a NATO versus Russia, you would need. Uh, the vast majority of your player base playing Russia or Soviets. And that isn't the case right now. The two major nations, at least from what I can work out, are Germany and America. The Soviets are a third, and then everyone else, I think, uh, everyone else is a bit lower. I don't really consider them in this idea, because obviously I can't get data on them. I can only really get data on the main ones. So, overall... If it was the case that the Soviets were the major nation in the game that everyone was playing at top tier, yeah, but they're not. So you've got to find a way around it, and the matchmaking system we have now uh, goes around it. Otherwise, uh, you would have no matches at top tier, or you'd have very limited. What you have to do is you have to convince the majority of the player base to play the Soviets at top tier, and you can't do that because all the people who want to play against the Soviets at top tier are American and German players who want to play together. It isn't a balance issue, in my opinion, at all. It's a player base issue, and what people want to play. 
If there was one Italian aircraft you would want to see in the game uh, in the future, what would it be? The Reggiani 2005, I think it's called. Let's have a look. There are also some, uh, there are also some light bombers from early war. It would be nice to see. Uh, but yeah, the Reggiani would be nice. This uh, beautiful plane right here, really like it. We're getting there with the Reggianis. Slowly but surely getting there. Eventually we'll get to this one. Uh, <laughs> we've had the 2001 now. So hopefully this is, comes uh, soon. Oh, somebody in the Q&A matrix was um, asking about uh, computer help. So it might be worth, you know, uh, let's see. So this is from Hellbringer. What is the reason why we don't have this version of the JU-88 in-game? Oh dear, it's a big one, isn't it? Oh, this is the 75 millimeter. I don't know really. Like the one thing after reading a lot about uh, the Ju88, they kind of tried everything, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like with the the Ju288, they there was there was plans to mount this insanely large gun, and I feel like with the Ju88s, what really surprises me is they did that remodel, right? They, when they added in the JU-88C, and uh, they did the remodel of the other ones, and I thought that was going to prompt the P models. I thought that was going to... Ugh, I, I thought that was going to spark these, you know, the Ps, or, or the ones with the large guns, kind of like how you have the, uh, the French-German aircraft. And it's just kind of a surprise that they haven't come yet, or if they are going to come, uh, maybe they've been held back, or I don't really know what's going on with them, you know, because I thought that was the point of the remodel, <laughs> to to add in stuff like this, and it would be great to see, um, I'm not sure I would like to see some of the crazier versions, but the one with the 75, yeah, screw it, why isn't it in-game? I'm guessing it's just not that much of a high priority, because of the, um, the duck, that doesn't mean it shouldn't be in. It should definitely be in. The uh, next one, also, could you please read Operation Cachism on the Trippets English Wiki? Trippets English Wiki. Oh, here we go. What, all of it? All right. <clears throat> so this is Operation Kachism. I like saying it like that. Don't make fun of me. Uh, early in the morning of the 12th of November, the Lancasters took off again for their third and final raid against the Turpits. Operation Catechism. <laughs> or Catechism. <laughs> Whatever the outcome of this attack, there would be little chance of a fourth attempt, since by 27th of November, the sun would be below the horizon even at midday, and there would not be sufficient light to see the target. There was a heavy frost at the airfield, and seven of nine squadrons Lancasters were so severely iced up that they could not take off in their overweight state. In all, 32 aircraft took to the air at about uh, 0300 hours. They reached the rendezvous uh, about 0935, low over Tornia Trask, a lake of 160 km southeast of Tromso. Took up uh, formation, and then they flew towards the northwest, climbing to 4,267 meters to clear the mountains and gain height for the bombs. Radar picked them up as they gained height, and the race was on. A race made even more tense than formerly by the knowledge that a German fighter squadron had recently been posted at Bardufos. Uh, as the Lancasters came over the, mount the last mountain range, they were met with intense anti-aircraft fire from the Turpids, the other ships and shore batteries, but the battleship uh, herself lay clearly visible. There was no cloud and no smokescreen. Turpids, indeed, was trying to conceal herself by smoke, which rose in the still air, but the smoke pots brought down from uh, Caffiord, although in position, were not primed. At 0941, the attack started and one of the aircraft let go the first of the tall boys to hit the Turpits uh, for the second time. At Bardufos, despite frantic calls for air cover, 
Not one single fighter seems to have taken off. They sent a message to Tirpitz, and there were British fighters over the airfield, but this was totally mistaken. The Germans should have had should have had a killing amongst the Lancasters, uh, stripped as they were of their mid-upper turrets, but the bombers remained unmolested except from Akak fire. In the eight minutes after 0941, 29 bombs were dropped with great precision between 3,810 meters and 4,877 meters. Two direct hits were achieved on the port side, one level with the bridge and the other alongside sea turret, which seems to have started a fire. Turpitch listed about 20 degrees to port after the first hit and then further over after the second, aggravated by a number of near misses along the port side, until she was listing to almost 70 degrees. At some, at about 0950, uh, just after the last bomb had fallen, there was a violent explosion and sea turret blew out completely. It was found some 20, 12 meters, 40 feet, from where it would have been expected and appears to have been the result of an internal explosion, not a hit by a bomb. Turpits rolled over to the port and capsized. Although the order had been given to abandon ship, Turpitz capsized so suddenly that there was no time for the men on the lower decks to get clear and the armoured conning tower and in the armoured conning tower damaged on the starboard side of Operation Tungsten, the port door jammed as the ship healed. Of the seventeen hundred men on board, about a thousand drowned. Eighty-seven were rescued by cutting holes in the ship bottom uh, to compartments where they had climbed. The bombers suffered no losses. The battle to sink the Tirpitz was finished. Between 1949 and 1957, the wreck of the Tirpitz was broken down and sold as scrap by the Norwegian company Einar Hovding, uh, up Hugging, <laughs> which brought the wreck from the Norwegian government. Einar Hovding paid 100,000 Norwegian kroner for the ship, which was a bargain. There you go. So that's how the Tirpitz was sunk. <laughs> So do I get the Italian M60 if I was planning on getting a tank to Grand Italy? Also, if I get it, could become rare-ish. Well, they're taking it off sale, so it's becoming rare, right? That would be rare. Uh, the fact that you can't get it anymore would make it rare. So yes, it will be rare. The question is, will it get its stabilizer taken or not? Now, as I said, there are conflicting sources. Uh, I've sent them to the relevant people, so we'll see what goes on. Well, they're not sources, really. They're articles, uh, basically, going through the differences. And then you can... You basically... <laughs> to find out about them, you have to talk to Otto Malara. It's as simple as that. If you have a chat with them, you'll find out exactly what they built, which is the Italian license-built M60s. Uh, let's see... Do you have any information about the World War mode? I mean, it's a long time that we have heard about it. I know that they want to release it this year, uh, so that's about it. Um, when it comes to overall gameplay, I want to do videos on it, but it, it is not open at good hours for me, right? Like, I know it may seem a bit odd, like, because you think, you know, I, I do videos all the time. There is places of time per day which do not work for me i do need to sleep i do need to do my actual work so yeah <laughs> it's just on at bad times uh let's see what is your opinion on map design and how to improve it jesus that's a big one um you have to go through it by individual maps i've done videos in the past looking at it if you want some of the videos just type in paratroopers or a, a new vision, and that'll give you a video where I go through what I believe. Could you make a separate video on the P-61 night radar? Uh, if the dev server wasn't closed, yeah, but it is. <laughs> so, maybe when it comes out. Not sure if this has been discussed before, but would you think that implementing the following to the scouting mechanic? When a target is scouted, it informs the team, just like when plunging... Uh, pinging the map. Example, scouted targets attention to map and spotted targets will flash on the minimap. 
At the moment, the scouted target just shows up, but I have found in games that unless you ping the map on scouted targets, no one seems to realize that the target is spotted. Yeah, uh, I get that too. <laughs> when uh, I, I get that too when it happens. Um, but that is a... Once again, it's a player-based issue that can be fixed through uh, knowledge and experience. So it should be promoted. You know, it should be promoted to try and think of it that way instead of, uh, instead of uh, you know, we need to find a solution for people being silly, we should try and stop the people being silly. What are you thinking about the possibility to cheat in War Thunder and that Gaijin doesn't stop it uh, to 100% about an anti-cheat software? It is literally impossible to stop something 100%. CSGO has one of the most comprehensive anti-cheat software out there, stuff still gets through. There's no way you can get it 100%. I think the issue is generally overblown. I think there are problems in every game about cheating. But I think uh, when it comes to it, they're doing the best uh, job that they can, or at least the one that makes the most sense. What's the best way to eat poutine? Uh, with a fork, uh, I think is probably the best. If you mean like what to eat first, uh, well, you just eat eat the chips, uh, and then everything kind of follows. <laughs> you know, you pick up the chips, and then off you go. I haven't had poutine that many times. I do like it though. Uh, it's just it's very bad for me. Uh, what do you think uh, the next April Fools event will be? Uh, I've already answered this. I think it'll be similar to the Furry Tiger. Did I hear more nations? Yes. What are your thoughts on reskin premiums, like the new Japanese F40, the new Israeli reskin French Vautour, and the things like the Doug LA7? Well, would you prefer new, uh, unique vehicles like prototypes or oddities, or do you like the reskins because they're identical to their tech tree equivalents? I prefer the reskins uh, just from a balance point of view. I understand the need for oddities and prototypes, but if, if we're talking about an ideal scenario for me, the ideal scenario is your premiums are just reskinned uh, standard tech tree stuff. That would be the best. Um, and also the French photo uh, is different, at least from the, you know, the one in the tree. It has air-to-air -air missiles. So there's a little bit of a difference, but yeah, I get what you're saying. In an ideal world, yes. Uh, I would rather them be identical. I think that would be the best for balance. And it would also mean that everybody has uh, access to, or they can get at everything uh, without having to pay. Thoughts on the striker? I'm sure it'll come soon. And uh, it would be nice to see. I think. I don't know. What do other nations get? I know Japan has something similar. I think French does too, so yeah, I mean, if we can find tech tree equivalents, let's go, or other tech tree equivalents. What about the Netherlands? I like the Netherlands, I've been there once. I like the countryside more than the cities, uh, but that's generally how I feel about any place, uh, so yeah. I found this on War Thunder's Facebook page, I'm just wondering about your opinion. Can we have older vehicles please? 70% of the game are World War II vehicles. We will be adding more to the existing trees, yes, but only massive numbers, unless it's a new national tech tree. I mean, it makes sense, right? As I said before, like, it, it would... It wouldn't surprise me if the way that um, they see it is that the World War II aspect is kind of done until they add in other trees, and that's fine. You know, there's a ton of World War II stuff in the game already. So, generally, it's fine, right? I just hope that they don't neglect new nations in favor of modern stuff. Um, just because, as I said, that's not what I'm personally interested in. What happened to World War Mode? It's coming out this year, so you'll find out very soon. I found this on the Russian Q&A some months ago, around 6. I translated it from Russian to English on Google Translate. When will the Swedish or Chinese nation be in the game? Approximately this year or in the following. More likely in the following. I mean, it makes sense. What? Hey. No, oh, come here. Hey. Uh, 
Oi. Oh, come on, Bernard. He's being an ass. <laughs> hey, Bernard. Come here. Oh, he'll come back. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this year I can see them really focusing on... Uh, I can see them really focusing on modern stuff and making sure that they're all sorted out. And then from there, you know, working on the older stuff. I can see that happening. Uh, let's see. Scout helis, yes or no? Lots to no armaments, but the ability to mark enemies like a light tank. Uh, but more effective. Also, electronic warfare for jets, thoughts, and potential issues. Bernard. Scout helicopters, I am in favor of, uh, to be honest. I think it's a cool idea. Um, the problem, the only, right, so when you have a vehicle which cannot kill the other enemy, uh, and I suppose scout helis in a sense can because of their very light armament, but if they don't have any armament, you're left in a scenario where I think, at least from Gaijin's point of view, they want to give somebody a chance of killing the enemy, right? So that's why we have, obviously, the BR system, and you have scouting, because you, you're in a t you're technically in a worse vehicle, but you still have the ability to kill. In a scouting helicopter, you don't, if you have no armament. It might be better going down the idea of, if we're going to do scout helicopters, which I like the idea of, I really do, um, giving them machine guns or cannons so they can deal with other helicopters and do it like that. So you you are more of a helicopter killer uh, than anything else, right? I think that probably would be better. Uh, but you'd still need... You would still need them to be able to... You'd still need them to be able to kill other helicopters because if you don't even give them that chance I don't think anyone would use them I would use them <laughs> but I don't think anyone else would and also I don't know how you would uh, be able to sort out score for those uh, because you don't really get a lot for scouting but you get a hell of a lot for killing so that would have to be rebalanced uh, electronic warfare for jets does sound really fun the we are so far away from it right now though and i know a lot of people uh, probably think that we're not but we definitely are <laughs> so i don't really put too much thought into it it will be something i'll have to properly look into like when when it starts becoming more more and more of a talking point i think is the best way of putting it but i think it would be much better to focus on uh, bringing in Mac 2 jets and using the similar mechanics we have now and then if we have to you know uh, if we have to expand the mechanics which I'm sure we're going to it would be worth looking into that stuff but I wonder how you could make it fun or engaging hmm I don't know I'll have a think what kind of new game modes would you like to see? Uh, a Gold Rush game mode, similar to Battlefield Bad Company. What are, in your opinion, the largest missing elements of the current incarnation of the game? Armoured cars, uh, or a lot of armoured cars, uh, or light tanks, light tank parity across the nations. American Wheel Tank Destroyer T-55 Cook, Interceptor, yes or no? I have no idea what that is. I know that it's a prototype, because <laughs> it's called a T-55. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'd like to see more armored cars. Could be a lot more fun. Right, there we go. What is this thing? Oh, hell. Wow. So it's literally just wheels and a gun. Sure. Screw it. It's got a free incher. Let's go.
<laughs> How about giving Japanese planes air to air bomber cluster bombs? Uh, I mean, wh how often do you get above a bomber and drop bombs on it? That would be nearly as useless as a shrug music. Actually, uh, I think it would be worse. Thanks, Meow. Um, it would be worse than them. I'd rather see uh, cluster bombs from, a, like, the Soviet cluster bombs that the IL-2s had. I'd much prefer to see that. Uh, historical question, why do recoilless guns have recoil? Because they're not called recoilless guns because of the recoil. Yeah. Let's go on a history lesson. Oh, I can't spell. Yeah, there we go. Bink. Recoilless rifles are different than bazookas. They use a propellant charge that, like a bullet, burns out before the shell exits the barrel. The propellant gases are directed backwards, counteracting the weapon's recoil, making it recoilless. So the recoil still happens, it is just counteracted. If Sweden arrives, the S-tank is inevitable, the gun is fixed, uh, and it is aimed by turning the whole tank and hydro suspension. How would you imagine the aiming be implemented in War Thunder? Uh, I would make it so if you're on the move, you control its aiming using WASD, and when you stop, you control it using the mouse. Um, that's how I would do it. Simple as that, nothing crazy, it would work fine. Uh, it might be a little bit annoying sensitivity-wise, uh, but it could be done. Why is the Romanian premium helicopter in the French tree instead of the Russian? Romania was a Soviet state of that time period because it is a licensed built version of the Alouette 3, which is a French helicopter. Why didn't Gaijin implement pontoons for the Kami and add uh, other amphibious Japanese? It's not like pontoons would be hard to implement. After all, they have managed to do so far because it would be completely pointless. <laughs> like, what would be the point? You're just adding extra weight to a vehicle that can hardly move anyway. And on top of this, it, the amphibious part of the Kami, it wouldn't really benefit you on many maps. And on top of that, it's still a Kami, and it's still awful. So, Type 16 MCV, wouldn't it be nice? Also a striker, it would be nice. I would agree. I mean, they are a historical weapon. Do you think Italy should get the M36B2? Uh, I would rather the Americans got it, but if we, I mean, it would be fine, uh, <laughs> you know, it would be fine going to a nation, as long as it gets into the game. I don't think, I mean, I suppose Italy would benefit from it, um, but it could go to, it could go to a number of nations, right? But yeah, if uh, maybe they just pick and choose which nation needs it the most. And Italy could be that. Could VTOL craft appear in War Thunder? I don't see why not. What well, if we got the Universal Carrier with the two-pounder? I would love that to be an event vehicle. Uh, will they ever fix P40 Leoncello transmission in some Aventes machine gun? Uh, I hope they... <laughs> I hope they fix the machine gun on the Semavente. I don't know why it hasn't been fixed. Um, I'm sure bug reports have been put in. Uh, I don't know the issue with the Leoncello's transmission, but if it is an issue, hopefully it, fi hopefully it is fixed. Will they add SP missions for tanks? I highly doubt it, because the single-player missions for air forces were brought in at a time where the game was just supposed to be completely focused around air forces. And for ground, I mean, you have PvE missions, right? But single missions, it's a lot of work for not a lot of pay. Like, think about the single missions for air, right? It isn't really a money maker, and there's uh, unless I tell you what, how they could be implemented if there was a concerted effort from community members to build the maps, then maybe they could uh, they could put them in. What's your favorite vehicle in War Thunder? Oh hell, Tempest Mark V. What is your favorite War Thunder meme? Uh, I liked when the Churchills were upside down, hovering. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, that was quite fun. 
Why is it that with the unveiling of the 285, most people express themselves as rather having balloons versus balloons, flinging darts at each other? Why can't armor be a thing in War Thunder? I want armor to be a thing. The problem is, is when you have one vehicle that has armor and nobody else does, then it creates a completely unbalanced scenario. So the problem with the 2A5 is not the fact it has amazing armor. The problem with it is that nobody else does. The Challenger 2, I know a lot of people are talking about how good its armor is. Its cannon breach is a huge weak spot. The T80, the driver's port is a smaller weak spot, still there. The Abrams is a lol pen. The Type 90 for these new rounds is, uh, you know, the hull is a weak spot, and once again, the turret ring. The problem with the 2A5 is that its weak spot is incredibly small when you're looking at it from the front. Incredibly small. So, I think what people are asking for is parity, and I don't blame them. It's kind of like the T2 thing again, right? Where you just have one which is just whew, miles higher. And then, you know, we'll see how everything fits around it, <laughs> is the best way of putting it. But yeah, I think um, I think mainly it's just because uh, it's it's you can tell that it is S tier and everything else is A tier. And because of the armor. Would you like to see vehicles like the Mine Roller Sherman, uh, the one thing with the huge S wheels instead of tracks, or something like the Churchill Avery? I'd like to see the Churchill Avery... Um, I don't know how the giant Churchill would work. I'd rather see a flail tank, you know, or a crocodile Sherman, or a crocodile Churchill. But a, fl a flail tank, tank would be interesting. Uh, I don't know what it would be used for, but it would be cool. Uh, would you like to see vehicles like the Mine Roller... No, I just read that. Just random question, but what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Bloody hell. Favorite war movie is Battle of the Bulge, and I know that'll trigger a few people, uh, but, <laughs> but I really like Guppy in it. Uh, I like Colonel Hessler. I know it's unhistorical, but I still like it. Uh, favorite movie, though? God damn. I haven't watched movies in a long time. Or, you know, I haven't watched a lot of movies in a long time. Um, hmm. I like Mysteries. Uh, what was that one called? Shutter Island was pretty good. I like that one. Uh, I normally just watch, like, detective TV shows. So, Foil's War. Foil's War is one of my favorite shows. Uh, so, I'll substitute this category for TV. Foil's War is awesome. It's basically an old-school detective who in World War Two is, you know, he's still fighting crime. And uh, he there's also a season that they do post-World War, well, two seasons that they do post-World War Two, And the reason why I'm going to switch it uh, for the movies, because all of the episodes are like an hour and a half long. So they're all, you know, they're, they're all crazy long, and they're basically movies within themselves. Yeah, Guppy's uh, great in uh, Battle of the Bulge. I thought you didn't like the 105 RMB one. No, I think it's cool. The Harry Hopkins tank, uh, which Electo is based on. Yeah, sure, why not? Let's see if I can find a uh, picture of this. My screen is bugging out right now. Like, uh, it looks... It, it, it keeps having random weird-ass lines across it. It feels like it's a loose connection or something's going wrong. Oh, this little thing? Yeah, the light tank Mark Seven, uh, Mark 8. Yeah, let's get it in. See, the the thing is, I know I know British tanks by their nomenclature. So if you, te if you say, like, light tank Mark 4, I know what you're on about. But Harry Hopkins tank, it doesn't mean a lot to me. What are your thoughts on the Wellington Mark 6? A completely different version of the Wellington bomber. It had a pressurized Canberra bubble canopy with the front being remodeled to look like bullet that fitted an advanced radio navigation system. It also had a bigger wingspan. Not sure how these changes affected the aerodynamics and stuff, but it'd still be pretty cool to have. Yeah, I agree. It looks like a whale. Uh, it would be a cool premium. <laughs> 
I don't think many people would buy it, but it looks really nice. The cockpit's interesting. I like that. Alright. Any predictions for this year's April Fools? Already answered this. And what are your thoughts on the Su seventy six I? Soviet tank destroyer built on the captured Panzer, uh, the Panzer three chassis. It was kind of a stopgap and substitute for the regular seventy six. There were two hundred plus made. Sure. Uh, yeah, let's uh, add it in. I would rather see the Stug four first though. You have a ton of messages in the DMs. Yeah, I know. I noticed. <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out. I do have eyes. Hey T C. Uh, do you think the HE-162 should get an above airfield S1 because it's so terrible and gets donked on by late war post war props? Um, yeah, I, I don't see why it shouldn't. And the the thing is with the 162, I can't get it fully up. Uh, I can't get it fully upgraded to work out how good it is. You know what I mean? So once I get it fully upgraded, then I'll make a full. I decision around it, but it definitely struggles. It is not a good vehicle at all. So yeah, it, it really isn't. Hey Josh, a Jato rockets on the one six two. That would be cool. That could solve the uh, the problem. How hungry am I? Not really. Uh, basically. Um, my wife gets off work at 10, and then I'm going to have to go to Mackey's uh, or Mackey D's afterwards uh, because she wants some chicken nuggets. So <laughs> that'll be the next time I eat. What do you think of the Challenger 2 Tess TS Megatron? <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, I suppose. Ah, yes, the Thumper, the autoloader Abrams with the 140. It'd be nice to see. See a lot of people wanting it as a premium, which is funny. Want to get hammed and sickled? Ah, yes, the Leninade. That's such a weird thing. I I need to find uh, where it is. I'm drinking ginger ale right now. But um, yeah, Leninade. There's there's a ton of weird stuff like that in uh, in Europe. I'd love to see more of it. Is it a tank or a truck? Uh, well. There's these wonderful things that we can see down here that uh, kind of give it away. It's a tank. I-250. We were actually looking the other day into rocket-propelled um, rocket propelled Soviet aircraft. Uh, so, yeah, it would be nice to see the I-250. I'm half an hour behind in messages. Jesus Christ. And do you think the Ju-290 bomber version could come at this point? It could carry three Fritz X's or the HS-293. I've got a feeling this one wasn't built. I might be wrong, though. There's one of them which is a really dodgy design. No, this one was built. Okay. Yeah, there was one which was a real dodgy design. Uh, I think I've actually advocated for this one. Maybe I'm thinking of the 390. Um, but I would love to see this in-game. Along with the the big ME, the Messerschmitt one. There is it the two six four, the um, the America or the design for the America bomber. Yeah, this one, <laughs> the big one. I w I would love to see these in game. I don't think that'd be very good, but it would be nice to see. I three twenty. Look how derpy. Yep, that is very derpy. I'll give it that. And the IL one o two. Yeah, sure. You think there'll be a Jaguar in 189? Everyone's... Where did the idea of a Jaguar come from? Is it just because it looks like a T2? Like, is that it? <laughs> is is that the reason why? Uh, I think it would be nice to see. But... Uh, the the problem is... is uh, The... You need tech tree equivalents from everything. As I said. I'd rather play planes. Why didn't Gajan add the Alpha Jet to German and French trees when stuff like the Javelin was added? That way the T2 uh, wouldn't have been too much of a surprise, design-wise. Um, maybe the reason why they did is so it would be a surprise. Get people interested. 
a lot of people for a long time have been saying that Japan has got nothing, so, you know, this gives them something. Honestly, what if the April Fool's was the Mac 3 aircraft? I mean, that would be kind of cool. Uh, what's your favorite weather phenomenon? Weather phenomenon? Hmm. Tornadoes are kind of cool. Also, geothermal energy. The fact that you can have pockets of the Earth which are pushing out very hot gases is something that I find incredibly fascinating. Not just from a harnessing point of view when it comes to the energy, but just from an idea. It kind of reminds me of acne on a person. It's just very weird. Uh, I would like to go into that study at some point in the future as well. Uh, what would you think if they took a little time to expand historical campaigns where we reach Guam and the two bombings of the nukes? Would that add new life to that part of the game? It would, but nobody would play it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where I live. Uh, do you want this strange creation? <laughs> I forgot the name of it. We'll find another name of it. I believe it's a, it's a T-34 with a T-62 uh, turret on it. But um, yeah, when it comes to the... Uh, when it comes to the single mission stuff or the historical campaigns, I think that has to be done... That has to be done now by the users uh, because uh, it's, it's not a money maker, right? It's kind of a nice little extra thing that we have. And it's kind of as simple as that. Like, we, it, it would be nice to see more of them. I really enjoy that part of the game. But from a money-making point of view, it doesn't really exist. Would you like to see World War One additions to War Thunder? I would in the form of planes. Uh, we already have some in Naval. And there, there has also been some other stuff that has been added to Naval as well. Uh, sorry, that has been past the development, such as the insect class from World War One. If we're talking about tanks, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I think it would be incredibly boring, because they weren't designed to kill each other. Uh, so, planes, yes. Navy, yes. Tanks, no. How do you think ARB could be improved? Uh, I've made videos about paratroopers, uh, supply lines... Yeah, uh, I'll show you the video. Do, 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 do. If you want to see what I would like from RRB, I should probably type in vision actually. That'd be easier to find it. Oh well. That, <laughs> I actually I really enjoyed making that. This one. Uh if you look on the channel, this video here, a new vision for air realistic battles, this will go through what I think could easily be put into the game, right? Um Do you enjoy the TV show MASH? Yes, I really enjoy MASH. I'm kinda disappointed with the ending of it, but overall I enjoyed it. <clears throat> Do you think we'll see anti-ship missiles before we get into heavy cruisers? Battle cruisers? We technically already have two heavy cruisers in the game. Uh, we have the Krasny, Craft Cats, or whatever it's called, and then the the new Soviet, uh, the Soviet cruiser. They're both technically... Uh, they're both technically heavies because of the guns that they have. Uh, I think we'll see heavy cruisers before uh, anti-ship missiles. I, I have no idea, uh, with the current vehicles we have in War Thunder, how you balance those missiles at all. I don't know how you do it. Uh, so, they're probably trying to work that out. I don't see a way around it uh, unless you make them hypersensitive to being hit. 
which is a thing you could do. And that would mean that people would have to quickly switch between their armaments. And my god, would that be a pain in the ass. But you could do it. Uh, let's see. When will Gaijube also consider naval repair and ammo cost? Look at the tier 2. The VS-10 Hydrofoil costs 3300 Repair. The next one, Jaguar, costs 13,000 SL stock in arcade. Might I add also, I completely hate the idea of balance by repair or ammo cost. I don't like the idea either, uh, as well. Um, I, I personally, in an ideal world, all of the repair costs would be the same, depending on BR. But uh, it's just, it's one of those things, right? Uh, it's, it, they use the system, uh, and hopefully the naval stuff gets affected by the economy changes coming after update 1.87, and there is a reason why the Jaguar is so expensive. It's a very good vehicle. Uh, would you want to do a video with me on physical designation systems sometime? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd be up for that, actually. And armament designations? Yeah, I would. We should. There's there's a bunch of uh, videos that could be done with you, Rocker, and Pytor, and everyone else. Basically just going through some interesting stuff, you know. What are your feelings on the Daimler Dingo? Suck out car with a boys anti tank rifle based on real life pen values. It might underperform at 23 millimeters at 100 meters, but they might be willing to buff it a bit. <laughs> I think personally, the dingo is really cool. Uh, the Daimler dingo, I would love to see it in game. I have no idea how it would work unless they finally added in rank one scouts, which, which aren't locusts that they've lowered in BR artificially. Oh, sorry, lowered in rank artificially. So, for me, yes, I would like to see it. Um, I don't know how... I mean, you could just give it the scouting mechanic and then just do that, you know. It would be fine. Tiger is going to be the next Tech Hub Talks. I talked to him today. Wonderful. Uh, so, if you didn't know, we actually do a series on the Tech Hub where um, we do a podcast series with uh, Matrix. And Matrix uh, actually gets people from the Tech Hub to chat to. And the idea is you talk to random members of the Discord so you can get a kind of idea of, you know, what happens there. So, looks like Tiger is going to be the next one. That'll be Tiger Frost. So, that'll be fun. You should interview Rocker. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be down for that. He's a bit busy with his job and stuff now, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> it is how it is. The World War One ships that could be added. Which ones would you be most interested to see? Uh, definitely the, um, definitely the insect classes or the Japanese huge destroyers. That would be fun. Another read, please, request. The end of the Ganizer now. Mm, maybe next time. I'm kind of tired now. The British Victory Bomber looks weird as hell. <laughs> I know what it is, but it's just looking at it is so odd. Vickers came up with some ridiculous designs. But uh anyway, so that is the QA done. Two hours forty two minutes. As you uh, all know as well, if if you do have any other questions that you would like to ask, you can always put them in the Q and A for T C and I will answer them uh through text. And uh we'll see We'll see how, if I do one of these next week, or how often I want to do them. Because it's, uh, you know, it is tiring, sitting here for 2 hours, 40 minutes, constantly talking. There must be a better way of doing this. I will figure out later on how to do it. Uh, but for now, at least it's still working. Uh, anyway, as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time.